Welcome to the PlayStation Experience 2015 edition of the Dream Bubble Podcast. Woo! Woo! Yeah. I am here with the lovely Pukuchu and uh, her husband yeah. Ben. Hello. Um, they were with me at the PSX. Uh, we crossed um, paths during um, roaming the Twitch floor and the booth and all that jazz. And then we kind of hung out for a little bit. And I thought it'd be really cool to have them on here to talk about their PSX, uh, uh, their travel journey. That's yeah. along with me. So, yay. Glad you're here, guys. Thank you for making yes, it. Yes, thank yeah, you. Thanks for having us. So, what the, I'm pretty sure the big highlight of during this whole journey at PSX, the past um, two days where we were there, was we got to see some bits of dreams. Like, I know mm -hmm. uh, people saw the live stream of it. I know you guys saw it up close. I saw it up close. Um, I believe during Monday at the private MM party and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yes, that's pretty that good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, we can. Yeah, so we'll be talking about our impressions because I know Pukuchu here was the first person ever to play Dreams from the Little Blue Planet community. So congrats <laughs> to you. So woo! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's probably a milestone for uh, a good few years. A couple of Reichenoids. Go forward to prove it if you don't believe me. Um, <laughs> so PSX. So was this your first time going to uh, the PlayStation Experience? I know you've, Pukuchu, you went last year, I believe, in Vegas. Uh, yes, and Ben us. also went last year. We oh, both wow. got to go as booth staff for Little Big Planet Three yeah. uh, last year because I worked on the trailers. Um, so I got to be there with the ad agency that did the trailers, and we hung out in the Little Big Planet classroom at yeah. PSX last year. It was a classroom at PSX. Uh, yeah, well, that's what they called it. Uh, they, they called it the Little Big Planet classroom because the setup was um, they had all these demo stations set up at little school desks where mm -hmm. people could sit down and you know play around in creative mode and that kind of thing. Um, and then we also gave some presentations, uh, myself and uh, and the and the guys from the team, Actramon, Vex Doppel, and Baghead. Oh yeah, I saw pictures of that. It was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah so now nice. the experience uh, this year was in your turf, San Francisco area. So you guys didn't have to fly over anywhere to go there. It was just a few <laughs> minutes away, hopefully. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was about an hour drive for us, but yeah. really relatively close compared with Vegas. <laughs> it's better than my six-hour crushed off flight, I'm telling you. Oh, that oh, was yeah. awful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate flying. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Uh, yeah, but I'm really glad you guys got to go this year. How did you, well, how was it, by the way? What were some highlights there? Oh, man. I'll only yeah. say that briefly. Uh, it was, yeah, it was really great. It was a lot bigger than last year. I mean, I'd say it was probably about twice the floor space. Oh, yeah, yeah it's three, um, yeah, yeah, three floors, levels. yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, just a lot more going on, a lot more to see this mm -hmm. year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Last year, of course, is always going to be memorable because it was the first time, and you know we were there with Little Big Planet Three. But this year, to be there, sort of on our own rather than as staff, was also really cool because we got to just do whatever we felt like. <laughs> do whatever we felt like. Yeah. yeah like, really what booth did you head to first? Like. Like, um, what was it the first thing you did when you saw like those incredible well, what's really funny we didn't realize that it was actually three floors we just thought it was level two and level three <laughs> and so we went straight to yeah. level two and we're like wow this is great cool it's about the same size as last year and then you know we we we, we didn't make it to the keynote in time so we me neither watched no. the, yeah we, it was yeah. crazy there were so many people there yeah um but we watched the you know the live stream of the of the keynote on the second level at the, the keynote. community stage right yeah. exactly at the community stage oh they were filming it there yeah. yeah, they filmed it and they broadcast it at, at, at level two at the community stage, and that whole that whole um, entry level on on level two was all full of people standing watching the the, the, the live stream of it. Oh my gosh! Um, yeah, it was amazing. Oh, yeah, my um, I, like my experience is completely different. Like I arrived in California, and then when I went to my hotel, the thing was five minutes into starting. So when I went on oh. Twitter, like I got the internet back. I went on to Twitter and I heard people were like cursing. It was, Why is this guy wearing a Crash Bandicoot shirt? Why is this crash that happened? I'm like, did I miss something? <laughs> yeah. So then that happened and then I was like, because I knew like I had to go do a few things before I went to the event and stuff. So I was like, so I, I thought um briefly me and Malika was going to be at the event, but um I don't know if they were going to be presenting. So I wanted to get my laptop on, see if they're going to reveal anything about dreams, but they weren't there. <laughs> like, oh, okay, so yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, there's there's a lot going on, but um, we were, I mean, really, we were there for Media Molecule. That was kind of like our yeah. Our so we're, oh, are they gonna be yeah. there? And then <laughs> I was like, oh, wait a minute. Um, they were like, oh, well, since you're here, come visit us by the community booth at four. I'm like, okay. So they're probably busy, so they might be there. They might not be there. I don't know. I tried to get an answer. 
Um, but they were pretty, pretty sneaky about it. So I was like, oh my gosh, something's going to happen. But I guess I overhyped myself. But either way, it was fine. <laughs> but yeah, like I literally, like during the conference, I went to the Moscone and then I got my badge and everything. Oh my gosh, my badge. They didn't have it. So someone took it. Oh my god! And then oh my I had god. this whole, I went and I contacted a few people. And I was like, what's happening? My badge is gone. And they were like, what is that possible? So then I ended up going to the help desk and they were like, one second. And then I spent like 20 minutes looking. They're like, oh, here we go. For some reason it's here. I'm like. Oh, oh wow. Oh my god. <laughs> but you sweat bullets. Oh boy. It was. I was holding my, like, when it, like right after it happened, they opened the doors too for the first time. So I was like, oh, wow, man. just in time. <laughs> just in time, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, aside from, from that event, I mean, it seemed like it was really well organized. I was really impressed with, like, crowd control. There's a huge amount of people for, like, I mean, you know, like, for, it was it was a large, you know, venue, but it was a huge amount of people, and they really seemed to have good organization for everything. The whole event seemed pretty, pretty, yeah, pretty seamless. Yeah, it was pretty well organized. They used the yeah. three floors pretty well. Like, the third floor, yeah. and yes. all there was was the... Uh, the concession stand with the really expensive cheap food. I mean, who <laughs> in the world charges five dollars for a can of um, Gatorade or Red Bull? I mean, that's oh, like that's pretty crazy. Yeah, I was excited by the free ketchup packs. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Something's free there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then um, that I'm assuming the conference was at the the third floor where the panels were, I believe. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that, that whole theater was was there. I didn't even yeah. know there was the third floor. Like. When I went to the first floor, I didn't know there was a second until I saw people going up the escalator. And then I didn't <laughs> yeah. know there was a third one until I saw the escalator again. I'm like, where's oh this lead to? That's so funny. Yeah, that's us with the first floor. We thought the whole first floor was just like the entry level and the check-in and all that. We're like, all right, on to the second floor. Yeah. And then we're like, and then we heard other people. Let's see, we went to um, we went to see Double Fine. We went and saw Spaff at Double <gasps> that's Fine. That's the first um, place I went to, actually, Double Fine. I oh, saw nice. Tim Schaffer. We did oh, a photo wow. booth thing in our phone. And then I went oh, looking for cool. Spaff for 10 minutes. That was the second uh, thing. I couldn't find him. So what I did was that, you know, there was like a black area behind the uh, booths and everything, like where all people were setting up stuff. Mm -hmm. I tried to sneak through there, I believe Ooh. it or not, because oh. um, Tim told me staff was behind there. So yeah. I went and then I opened the carry and all I see was five random people working behind the computers and looked at me. I'm like, uh, hello, <laughs> uh, it's Bath there? You're like, not here. I'm like, okay, oh my God. and I just left. <laughs> the search for Spath. Uh, yeah, we finally made it down there um, to the second level, or I mean, we made it down to the first floor yeah. at the end of the first day because we were up on the second level the whole time. We were like, I knew, I knew Double Fine was supposed to be here somewhere. Where's yeah. Spath? We can't find him. And then we realized there was a lower level, and we are like, oh, we just walked right past that earlier. Uh, <laughs> I know. Yeah, like, so we finally made it down there. <laughs> I know, it was like the first thing we saw, like, it was a big yellow sign that says Double Fine. I'm like, well, I know where I'm going first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty fun. Did you guys finally meet up with him more? Uh, yeah, 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 we did find him yeah. at the at the end of the of the first day. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and yeah, then we bumped right. into him again on the second day, just kind of randomly in passing. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. that's pretty good. I only yeah. saw him briefly at the party on Monday, which is pretty cool. Really great oh, guy. Yeah, we oh, man, we party. chatted for a while at the oh, party. Yeah, he's so cool, cool guy. <laughs> really cool. Uh, wow. There's a lot of cool stuff over there. There was a regin like I didn't know about the Reggie Clinton release date until I went into the. The first floor, that is a huge theater spotlight thing with a theater screen saying, Reggie and Clank um, coming out in April, oh, yeah. I forgot what it was, I think the 20th. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. so I guess they announced the, uh, the release date for the movie. Yeah, yeah. That's right, the, that's right. the movie and the game, I think they announced. I'm not sure, maybe they had already announced the game. The game that I saw yeah. an article about yesterday, yeah, it comes out the same day. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, yeah, that was one of the demos that we tried. We that actually, so cool. um, yeah. we okay. went in, I think it was the last thing we did on the first day. We waited until the very end of the day, and then um, because there were a lot of people there, it was a long line earlier, and then oh, kind of cleared oh, out. Oh, and yeah. we got in up there, and we tried all three of the scenarios, and we were there almost until the end of the nice. first day, I think. Yeah, yeah it was and pretty cool. And the free cool. popcorn, they had a little booth with the, the, the um, they were giving away free popcorn. I was very excited. Oh yeah, well. free popcorn. Yeah, and then um, <laughs> Ratchet, you know, the the character actor in costume came and yeah. snuck up behind me while I was playing. Uh, that's, awesome. <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah, um, actually. Um, when I went to the first floor in the beginning, there was nobody there for the first half hour. It's like oh, five wow. people. Mm -hmm. And there was just pe like people waiting at the booth and stuff. And then the Ragic, um, a guy in a cosplay costume of Ragic came to me and I saw him. It was pretty cool. He was shorter than me. And then I saw him <laughs> with the uh, official Ragic that you guys saw to get pictures. It was really cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But uh, I was going to say, oh, yeah. I wish I knew you guys were playing Ratchet and Clank because I kind of did something I shouldn't. Um, back at the Twitch booth, there was another free TV. No one was using it. The, uh -huh. the, and I kind of accessed their PlayStation 4 dev kit and played the demos on there when no one was My. looking. <laughs> <Goodness>. <laughs> you naughty person. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, uh, oh, like, so oh cool. why didn't you tell me where it's like you went? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> and the, yeah. But no, I mean, I'm sure it was fine. I mean, there were people there. They didn't yell. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was like, for sure. It was either that or Dia the Tentacle, I think. But I already <laughs> played that at the booth. But yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Oh, I should have told me you could have brought the popcorn up there. You could have, like, sat on the couch and everything. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the, I really love the demo. I recorded the new weapons. I put it on Twitter for somebody to see it as well. Oh, but um, nice. it was really fun. Cool. Also, uh, for the record, me and Molecule, if you're listening to this, uh, I think it was completely okay to use a death kit when no one was looking. I'm pretty sure <laughs> someone was next to me. I think it was a Twitch manager, so don't yell at me for this. I love you. Okay. <laughs> well, disclaimer. Uh, well, dev kits are kind of like the most awesome thing there is. So if you get your hands on one, you can't pass up that opportunity. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Uh, like, the thing is that we weren't allowed to touch it. Oh, not touch. We weren't allowed to take pictures of it or like anything. Like, but I don't think, like, I've seen 15 dev kits and Twitter so far, like in plain sight, uh-huh. like it wasn't focused on it, but it was there. So, but yeah. there, I was told not to like film the death kits or anything. So I was like carefully oh. angling my <laughs> pictures and like, I think yeah. And but they do look pretty cool. I don't know if we're allowed to talk about it, but I'm not gonna <laughs> risk it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially well, if I put this on iTunes. <laughs> we yeah. signed our NDA, so we won't right. say anything. You know what the beta is in us. No, I'm just kidding. I wish. <laughs> and uh. I'm a free man. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was really fun. So you guys went to the Reggie and Clank. Reggie and Clank was pretty fun. Yeah, it was great. yeah. yeah. I, I really love what they're doing, um, re, like sort of rebuilding the original story and incorporating all like like the you know the the, the subsequent um, you know uh, different stories, bringing it all into like rewriting the original story. It's it's pretty exciting. Yeah, and I'm I was a big fan of the re-release on PS3 of the original three. Uh, games, so I'm I love super those. excited about mm-hmm. having it all on PS4 and looking really great. Oh yeah, I still need to buy the collection for PS3. I have it. I have <laughs> all re- original games on PS2. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, especially so the first one. Yeah, it's a really fun. Uh, Deadlock was awful. I was talking yeah. to my friend uh, uh, yeah. Platt, yeah. uh, Claw, <laughs> and we were talking about the games. He told me Deadlock was the worst. <laughs> he oh, it, like... he got platinum every single one. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Deadlock was definitely the least exciting, but still like worth playing all the way through. Yeah. I, mean, it's like, I beat you know? it three times to get all my <laughs> um, weapons to level 99 and beat the elite mode or whatever. Um, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. What else did we see? There was Uncharted. There was... Yeah, we yeah. didn't play any of it, um, but we kind of stood around and watched other people play. We're, was it the multiplayer kind of, beta? Um, was no, it the multiplayer, it multiplayer beta? No, I don't think so. No. Um, okay. Although they may have had more than one. We we wandered around and we saw a lot of different gaming booths, so, so I'm not yeah, sure the, if they had... The Uncharted booth was amazing. It was like... I saw... The, the yeah. decorations oh, alone man. were just really yeah. cool. I um I remember I walked into the second floor and you see this huge Uncharted sign, and below it was like all like foresty, and there was like cabins and yeah. like wood and yeah. can carved names, and it was really cool. And it was a truck. The truck in the second floor that you could just jump in and take a picture in. Oh, yeah, yeah, picture yeah people taking pictures. Yeah, that was right. amazing. <laughs> I wanted to do it, but I forgot to. It was in my set the whole time, too. Um, yeah, yeah, that was pretty fun. It was really cool to um, to see uh, more people dressing up in costume this year. First year, I think it was um, it was such a new situation. I think a lot of people were a little hesitant to kind of come in costume. Um, but, yeah, I don't um, think there were any cosplayers last year who weren't paid actors. Like, yeah, they had there, a few there paid, paid actors, costume actors, which was cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, but this year, yeah, there was definitely a few more people that were just you know there for the event that were that were dressing up. And that was really exciting. Um, we, we you know we've done Comic Con uh, two years now, right? Two. Yeah. Two years, and. Um, you know, so kind of seeing that that evolve in the, at the PSX level is super exciting. Yeah, know. cosplay is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know cosplay is really. Cool. I saw a lot of cosplay. It's really fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else was there? I saw. Well, I didn't see one panel. I went up during my time to check out uh, the story panel that Kareem was in. Oh yeah, we saw that oh, panel man. too. You did? Yeah. I went up. Yeah. I, I took a peek, and everything was all dark. And I see this like really <laughs> blue lights, and I followed yep. the light. And it was this huge, like twenty foot camera filming the whole entire thing right in front of me. I didn't want to touch it; it would fall over. <laughs> and I just walked creepily away from it. And then I saw like the whole audience and the panel happening. I didn't want to disturb anybody, so I went back. But um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really we went awkward. to uh, three panels, I think. Um, there was that one, and then there was um, um, PlayStation I Love You. Right? Oh, yeah. Um, that was cool. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. that was, uh, what was the other panel? Oh, yeah, The Future of VR. Yes. That was, that was also an interesting panel. Oh, with Anton, yeah. yeah. And Anton was in that, yeah. 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 I was going to go to it, but then I had to do uh, another Twitch thingy. 
Um, but yeah, I got to watch it afterwards, though. So that was fun. I thought YouTube. Thank God for YouTube. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, and then after all, this, like I know Double Fine streamed a lot of stuff to Community Booth. There was a trivia game. Um, that people did PSX trivia game where they answered questions about PlayStation characters and video games and stuff, and they won prizes. Then, oh yeah, we watched some of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty fun. And then I remember when I saw you guys, I was sitting around the Twitch booth, I was like chilling, and then I saw Pukachu, because I remember I was seeing your face somewhere on Twitter, I was like, yep. wait a minute, isn't that who I think it is? And then <laughs> I, I, walked, I went out of the Twitch booth, I turned around, I was like, Pukachu! And then she was like, oh, it's Harbor dude! Like, ah! And then I finally saw each other, which was pretty cool, and then I met Ben. And then after that, I went, and then I, um, and then after that, you guys got to see the molecules for the first time ever. Yes, yes, that was our first time uh, meeting Jenny and um, and no, everybody else yeah, there, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, man, it was so cool. Oh, uh, it's it's always so so cool when you meet somebody who's, like, involved in creating something that you love. <laughs> yeah, very inspiring. Yeah. Yeah, and everyone at Media Molecule are, are just, like, the most nice people. <laughs> oh, I mean, they're so forthcoming with everything that they do, and they're, like, they, I mean, they have such value in the community that really makes people in the community want to be a part of the community, you know, and so it's, like, it's just, it's cyclical, you know, it makes everybody happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Happy. Yes. <laughs> if it makes you happy, clap your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get them all clapping for me next time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, um, really cool people. Uh, now, there's a lot of cool stuff in PSX. Um, I don't know if there's anything else you guys saw that's really interesting you want to tell us about. Oh, yeah, uh, well, I saw Sean Lorden, by the way. The guy with the crash shirts. Like, I oh, didn't know anything uh, about the crash shirt, and I saw him. I was like, wait a minute. Like, oh, I'm not going to ask. Just, hi, nice to meet you. Let's just take a picture and move on. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, oh, yeah, I met um, I met tons of developers. I met um, some folks from the uh, Tomorrow Children. Pretty nice guys. Uh -huh. Fun bits with the Fat Princess. I oh, saw man. briefly a Rocket League developer from Psychonics. Yeah. Really cool oh. dude. Uh, so, oh yeah, and the security guard for the Twitch booth, he became like my best friend. Like after like <laughs> 10 minutes later, I was saying hi to him. We were like joking around about making people pass and not pass. And like five minutes later, he was like, oh, these people pass, are they good? I'm like, I don't know. I'm not even supposed to be in here. <laughs> and I was like, eh, what the hell, let's bring him in. Oh. And they happened to be the people who made Hot Shots Golf. Oh my God. Oh, how funny. <laughs> wow, that was crazy. Pretty cool, dude. Oh. Yeah. oh my God, speaking of the Twitch booth, um, we got locked out actually, the second day. Oh um, God. Crystal, the Twitch manager, she was waiting outside. We were like, hey, do you, have, you guys have to have the key to the booth or anything? I was like, uh, no. I was like, oh, well, security guard doesn't have it, so we're locked up in the inside, so we can't be streaming today. I'm like, oh, wow. Oh, no. <laughs> so Unacceptable. I, I was like, I went and I asked people, I was like, wait, didn't the molecules have a key or anything? I don't know. And then I, was like, I texted Jenny, and I was like, hey, does anyone have a key? And then she was like, no one had a key that I know of. And I was like, oh, my God, we're going to get in. Then for a second, I was thinking that they were going to lift me up over the ceiling and try totally. and, like, tip me over the booth, like, over yeah. the inside. <laughs> but the walls were really light. Like, they weren't strong. And they were portable. So I was afraid the whole wall was going to topple over if I tried doing that. That's one way of so, getting in. <laughs> so I, I, like, I was like, yeah, I'm, like, I do that stunt. I'm really good. It's like, I'm, I don't want to break my back today. It's not worth it. It would hinder your Twitch presence. Yeah, yeah plus you didn't want to be debilitated for the party on Monday night. Yeah, I, like, afterwards, I don't know, got two security guards. They didn't know where to find a key. And then afterwards, um, uh, I think one of them tried, like, all of their keys. And then eventually they found one that worked. And we're like, oh, hey, yay, we're saved. <laughs> and they were like, we got a Twitch stream, five minutes to go. Because oh. we were supposed to start, like, at 9 o'clock or something. Oh. And then it was, like, 9.30. And then we were... Man, Anton, like, he got his thing ready, ready and set up, and then everyone came at the same time and started streaming. But yeah, that was pretty... <laughs> That's <laughs> right there. Yeah, yeah. It was fun. Well, I was really glad all those were up to um, see on YouTube later, because, you know, that was a whole bunch of streaming that we missed because we were busy yeah, <laughs> at the time. The last, uh, last one I had, um, the last one I had was really, like, we had to do it really quick because it was time to leave PSX. It was about to close, and the guy was about to take out the internet. We were like, wait, we only do one more stream. <laughs> he was like, okay, guys, 20 minutes. I'm like, okay, fine. So in that stream, I ended up talking really fast because we didn't, didn't have a lot of time left. And oh. the guy never came in way after we left, so I didn't have to rush, which I was uh kind of like, really? Oh, my God. Yeah, so, like, that's the stream, I believe, with Alex interview and Kareem. It's pretty cool. All really oh, great yeah. people. Um, oh, meeting them for the first time was pretty fun too. Like I remember for me, I was like, we weren't even supposed to stream that day if I recall. It was all completely out of the blue. 
Whoa. who just wow. happened to see empty Twitch boots and then they were like, hey, let's stream PSX stuff. Because I think <laughs> the, that was meant for the community booth instead and for the party. Oh. So, because I remember Jenny, she was telling me that, um, uh, hey, we just happened to find a Twitch booth and if you want to stream. I was like, hell yes. I didn't even <laughs> eat when I got off the plane too. So I was like, you know what, I don't care. I'm starving, but I'm going to do this anyways. So I went up to the second floor and then I looked through the glass, through the Twitch booth and I saw them. I was like, Jenny, Jenny. <laughs> she didn't even see me. She was on her phone. I was like, Jenny, Jenny. And then she looked at me. She was like, who is this guy? Like, she, she hadn't seen each other in like nine months. So she was like, who is this guy? And she was like, oh my god it's you so then i ran all the way around and i met her and then like in less than two minutes i had a headset on and restrained it was wow. like really wow it was really crazy <laughs> still yeah, heavy breather schedule <laughs> it was a quick schedule yeah. yeah and then john and anton really fantastic guys they were kind enough to do an interview with me afterwards too and then alex as well for dream bubble Woo-hoo. that was pretty yeah. fun well it's great for the community to have gotten all this information because i mean like we're always just constantly hungry for more right. about our favorite games. And then for the people who didn't get to go to PlayStation Experience, I'm sure it was just awesome to have all that streaming going on because, you know, there's all this stuff happening. You want to be part of the action, but at least you can experience it vicariously that way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's really great. I mean, like, I know I, I was there, like, I mean, like, okay, if someone else was in this position, they would probably want the community to know as much as possible. So I was like, all right, I got to get really in touch with the community at this moment. It's like that shining moment where I'd be like, all right, here we go. I'm going to do this stuff. I'm going to find out what a beta date is. And then out of nowhere, I didn't get a beta date. But I still got tons of information, so that was pretty cool anyways. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. still don't have a beta date. Nobody start bugging Danny for that just yet. <laughs> I, just, like, I didn't know how powerful it was. Like, I mentioned, I joked around about the beta once in a tweet. Then I got this nonstop notifications <laughs> coming from my Twitter. Like, hey, dude, when is it? Can I sign up? Yeah. What do I sign up? I was like, guys, relax. I was just referencing a beta. I didn't say nothing was coming. I don't know what I think. I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm not going to do that again. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been carefully, like, trying to carefully dodge the word beta from my tweets from now on until something <laughs> actually happens. But yeah, <laughs> that was really crazy. But um, too much. One word is too much. So it's the time of the year again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of dreams, though, you guys got to play it too. Uh, how was it for you guys? It was it was really cool. I mean, obviously, I would have loved to spend more time with it, but <laughs> there was, you know, there were a lot of people um, there that night who wanted to try it out, and I actually did not realize until after you mentioned it that I was the first person from the community to uh, the only try people it out. from the other big community was me and you. And yeah, I did not player. realize yeah. that at the party until like the end of the party. I was like, oh my god, all of these other people are actually like professionals in the industry. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, oh wow. And then I was like, yep, there we go. I'm capturing this moment. And that's where. <laughs> yeah, I, cool. I can't wait for the beta to come out and <laughs> get some more time on it. Well, how did you get to the party, by the way? Uh, oh my god, that party was amazing. I mean, it was it was so much fun. Everyone was so happy and like it was just a really good time um with with, with the, con- the controls on on uh, dreams the move controllers i was really impressed I've, I've never really gotten that excited by the move controllers in general yeah and so many people feature, it's yeah it's so intuitive like it really is yeah. it's like it's like using a paintbrush like you just it takes a few seconds to kind of get used to it and kind of know which you know which which functions do what um but then it's just it's, it's a very intuitive concept and I, i'm just really excited by that yeah i never enjoyed using the move controllers that much before me neither <laughs> No, yeah, I was going to ask you guys about your questions about it. Um, yeah, like, I was going to say, like, people are always judgmental. Are we required to have a camera? Are we required to have a new controller? Are you required to do this, do that? And we're like, no, you're not required. It's <laughs> no, great you if you have it. you do however you want. <laughs> yeah, just do whatever you want, guys. Like, it's amazing. Like, they give you the option to add more to your experience, but um, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. Yeah. Or if you don't want to pay for it, like PSVR or Knowledge Jazz. Sure. But very like fun. you said, Ben, um, when we tried it, that the, it was very fluent. I mean, it takes like a minute to get used to um, the buttons and everything. But mm-hmm. once you get the natural flow of it, it's like you're moving a wand. Like you're trying to do like Guardian, like Leviosa, and Harry Potter. Oh, and you slowly like, make a spell <laughs> and you like the emperor everywhere. You start creating. It's like super, yeah. it's really fluent. Like I, when I tried it out, Kareem only like, he taught me to do the clone tool really quickly. And you guys saw me doing that too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was placing the rocks and the trees, scaling it. Scale was pretty big. And you saw me, I was like, I remember I was talking to Sarah, I was like, hey, let's see how far we can go in, inside this level. And I started zooming out with the move controller. And then out of nowhere, I was in my view, but that went pretty far. 
I mean, I'm satisfied. I am satisfied with my care. <laughs> la 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 la. <laughs> Big Hero 6 reference. But anyway, um, yeah, it was really fun. Ben, like you said, you love the motion controller, right? Yes, yeah. I, yeah, I, you know, I've, I've only done a few other games with uh, the move. Nothing very thorough, you know, just kind of trying it out. Yeah. Um, never impressed with it. I'm, I'm like an old school gamer. Like, I, you know, like, I don't know. Like, I... I I don't have a lot of time, like lately, to do to really get into a lot of gaming heavily. But back in the day, like Nintendo and Super Nintendo, that's kind of my whole life, you know. So like, like the idea of actually using just a regular controller has always been the way. Like it's that or it's nothing. I don't really like computer gaming where it's like you know a mouse and like arrow keys or whatever. Um, so the idea of trying to learn how to do the move and 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 be happy with it was never like you know I was pretty biased by the the whole idea <laughs> from the get go. And then thinking, you know, hearing that, like, I mean, I was really excited by the concept of dreams in general, but then hearing that, like, you know, like using the move controllers is really the best way of doing it. I was like, okay, well, I'll try it. And then when I actually tried it, I, I was only at it for like two or three minutes. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, it was, I was totally sold. Was, you only need two or three minutes yeah. to get used to the controls. That's, That's the right. amazing thing about it. Yeah. yeah, it is. I wanted to try to dual strike too, but it was charging, I believe. Um, uh. <laughs> have you guys tried the character part of it yet? The um, moving characters, entering the, the mm -hmm. what do they call them, the portals, the links? No, no, we didn't do any of that. No. no. no yeah, uh, I mean, it looks really cool though. I yeah. saw so much of it. Like my mind's like I can memorize every single pixel <laughs> where each of it was. Like because I saw them behind the scenes, like redoing it over and over and over again. Like, my favorite one happened to be the banana. Like, well, not the banana, but like the toy block world with like, all those characters and all of the uh -huh. bubbles you can pop to create in. Mm -hmm. Um, that was yeah. my favorite one. They like possessed the banana. They they possessed the. Uh, I don't know, like one of those moose guys from the winter level. They possess the uh, war guy, like like all kind, the coffee mug. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> well, let's not forget about that pair. Like that pair, or that when we entered the painting and got to possess the yes. pair. Oh, walk the around. painting like, is that's amazing. Yeah. The yeah, painting, yeah, like, like I remember when I was streaming with um, Anton, uh, he was showing me dreams. I was like, oh, and I was like, oh, you know, it'd be cool. Uh, it'd be cool if you go into that painting and actually, you know, play that <laughs> painting. I was like, oh, let me show you something. He used it and he went to the painting and went to the painting and showed the pair. I'm like, we all just laughed. Like, I was silent for a moment. They all just laughed. I was uh, like, wow, okay. That's so cool. That was yeah, a pretty. I, I, can't, I can't wait to see what people from the community are going to be able to do with this because it yeah. really, like, it's just, you know, just like that's a perfect example of like, you know, like you, you see a painting, you think, oh, wouldn't it be cool to go in there and have that be a portal to another level? And that's exactly yeah, what it sure, is. Yeah, so sure. Why like, not? <laughs> anything you can think of, you can do. And it's just like, I mean, seeing some of the stuff that people have done in Little Big Planet, imagining that translated into dreams, it's just like, you know, I'm, you know. I mean, I think they captured the simplicity in 3D as much as they can, and they're willing to optimize it even more. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's like the big factor in it, because um, for Little Big Planet, like uh, two-dimensional, 2.5D, it was simple. You know, place a block, move a layer, place a block, hold it down if you want to. You just have logic and decorations on it. You're done if you wanted to yeah. do that. But in, like, here, take a tree, and this whole entire database of, like, thousands of objects made by the molecules. Soon, people from the beta take them, set them down. There you go. You can be all the big planet about it, or you can just create your own. So, like, they expand on it, and it's easy. Yeah, I, I think it's always been a little bit of a, a challenge with Little Big Planet that. People say they want it 3D, but realistically, if you try and turn Little Big Planet into a 3D building environment, it's it would be pretty difficult for a lot of people, especially newer creators. And I think Dreams is going to cater more to the people who maybe don't have a whole lot of create experience and want to just jump in and start doing something with that freedom. Yeah, it's um, yeah, like you said, basically it's free, and then you just jump in. Like even if you have like five minutes or ten minutes every day, I don't know how long it will take to boot up your PS4. But if you don't count for that and you just go into dreams, like if you go into suspend mode and then go straight into dreams, um, I'm pretty sure it'll take like five or ten minutes. You can sculpt whatever you want and send it to the world for people to use. Like you, you can just be like, hey, I just want to make a random object. Sculpt it up. It can be just a smiley face with, I don't know, a coffee mug for hairs or a cable charger for legs or whatever you want. And just send it and put it online for people to use. And there you go. You do something for the day in dreams. Nothing yeah. complicated, fun, improv. You know, it's like that. And if you want, you can 3D print it if you have a 3D printer or have access <laughs> to a 3D printer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or you can import it into any other friendly software that accepts importing, such as game engines like Unreal, Unity, and all the other jazz, which is pretty cool. Wow, that's mind-blowing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I really love that um, that we're going to be able to publish individual objects for other creators to use, and that's not all level-oriented. 
you know, because that's something that's always in Little Big Planet. We've always had these giveaway levels, which are great. People make a bunch of stuff to give it away. But, you know, it's like finding that stuff is difficult, promoting it, telling other people what you've created is difficult. And I think it's really great that we're going to be able to have just individual objects that we can publish. And, you know, like they were saying, have these lists of, oh, well, all I do is I make eyes for characters. And I've got like 3,000 different eyes that I've made. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, like... For instance, I wanted to see if someone would go to like the database and search dreams beta codes, see all the the, the the entire set of beta codes in the database. That would be a really good Easter egg. Like, <laughs> like they may be yeah. invalid, like if they're already used. Yeah. Like Alex, if you're listening to this or Animal Community Molecule, please put in the request saying if you search dreams beta codes uh, in the beta, please put all of the codes that have been redeemed into the library of codes. I don't know how you would do a drama or something, but that would be really really funny. <laughs> That'll be like a little Easter egg. That'll yeah. be kind of like, hey, you want a beta code? Here you go. There's hundreds of them. Y'all been waiting for this. So, oh, uh, yeah, I forgot. They're invalid. They've been used. Hey, there's a beta code. You didn't say if it wanted to work or not. Troll, whoa, whoa. But anyway, yeah. That'll be pretty funny. Have a collection of beta codes. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, we played it briefly. It was really cool. I mean, seeing the molecules, seeing us create stuff inside of it, too. Like, they were really excited for that. Like, they want to see yeah. how we get to use it. Like, instead of internal testing 24-7, they want to see how it goes um, outbound into the outside open and see how we, like, adapt to it. Mm -hmm. And I really think for the beta, they're going to get more of that data to analyze and adapt to uh, than what we did there. I yeah. mean, yeah. I mean, let's go back a few. Um, let's go back in time for a bit and talk about that party. I mean, for that party, <laughs> the party was really fun. The blue bad at the Ula bar. Yes. I mean, I had some really great drinks. I didn't drink anything because I wasn't 21. But I am 21 right now, so ha. Ah. <laughs> so next well, I, I, can let, I can tell you that the Molecule drinks, the little pink cocktails they had, those were delicious. They had pink cocktails? <laughs> yes. Yeah, they were especially, it was a special it recipe was... for Media Molecule for yeah. the event. Yep. Yep. Wow. But yeah, I know uh, Alex and Jenny created the event. They organized it and everything. It was really cool. They I know did an amazing um, job. Uh, Lucy produced it, uh, which is really cool as well. She was awesome for that as well. I don't know if people know that. Um, she, she was really helpful. Uh, Lucy Black, if you're listening to this, thank you so much for helping me smuggle in that cake. Uh, you know, <laughs> like uh, the whole plan thing. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, about the cake. I had to, I had to show up for the party an hour early. It was so, wow. just to smuggle in the cake I got for them for their birthday. So, <laughs> so cool. I didn't want them to see me. So I took like seven Ubers to get to <laughs> the cake place, to get back, to get to the other place, to get back, to get to here, to get to the Ula bar. And I almost had a near-death experience twice when um, people almost um, made me get off in the middle of the road. But <laughs> that would oh kick my hand. I'm like, crap. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, oh, um, that's San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, that's San Francisco. I learned something new for once. <laughs> Check before you land off. But, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, yeah, after that, I got there. Like, I knew there, like I had an estimate of what time they were going to be there to prepare, thanks to Lucy. So, I was like, okay, let me get there before then. I ended up getting there 10 minutes after the time they were supposed to be there. So I was afraid they were going to see me. Oh. So I was like, I, I told the owner, um, she was amazing. I told her to meet me outside to give her the cake. So she met me outside and gave her the cake. She told me no one came in yet. I'm like, oh, okay. So I guess I have time. But I was like, I can't be here now because they're going to find me. She was like, oh, I'm just going to walk around for a half hour. I'm like, okay, time to go sightsee ink. So I went around. I went to a bookstore. They had like a whole bunch of Grumpy Cat books. I don't know what. <laughs> like, it was a really cool place. I went to my first noodle restaurant for a bit. Wow. And there was like 15 bars like around me. I'm like, really? This is not going to help me at all. <laughs> was yeah. that your first time to San Francisco? Yeah, it was. Nice, cool. And thank God I had GPS on my phone or I would have been lost. <laughs> Speaking of my phone, it kept dying out of battery. Oh, it was really man. awful. Like, I, like, oh, man. like right after the MM party, my battery died. And during PSX, my battery almost died twice. But um, I believe uh, Dave, um, Jenny's boyfriend, she had, uh, he had um, a portable charger that I used, and that saved my life like three times. Nice. So yeah, pretty, those things are nice. <laughs> uh, I'm going to buy one soon. I still have yet to buy one. I will buy one, Dave, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> that experience has forever scarred me in my traveling life <laughs> and my traveling pants. Life yeah. lessons. Yes. Life lessons. Get a portable charger. Yeah, yeah, we have a couple. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. What country do you have? Um, 
What are these? They, Let's see, that one, one is from Brookstone. Yeah, it's just a little Brookstone USB charger. It works on anything. Polka dot. I don't know what the Yours brand is. Yours is a Brookstone, too, I think. No, I don't no? know where this came from. Target, yeah. maybe? This is Target, maybe. Yeah. Who knows? Don't know. <laughs> it's lovely. It's black with little white polka dots. Yeah. We're those kind of people. We just have lots of, you know, accessories like that all the time. <laughs> just for me to think of it, I was thinking about what if I had a drone? And I put my camera, like my phone, on that drone. And like I went over the bar during the party. I, like flew the drone <laughs> inside of the bar to get aerial view and everything. That would be that pretty would epic. Cool. <laughs> I know for camera, like Ben, you filmed the whole thing. Thank you so much for that. I know that was a big hassle, like um, oh, because no, of the was darkness was like all dark and was, you had to yeah, get the raw footage. Tricky. Yeah, it was very tricky. My camera wasn't special. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's definitely not the best camera for low light, but it was, it was a real pleasure to get to film all that. I mean, like, you know, like I, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not an active member of the community, so it kind of felt good, like I got to kind of buy my way, you know, sort of thing. Um, but uh, no, it was it was great. I I was glad to be there, so that was cool. Yeah, uh, it was really awesome. I know, and like I remember, I was Dave. He was taking pictures with his um, portable camera and his hand pictures. And we looked, and all we saw was you and Sarah outside setting up this big, huge <laughs> mechanical thing. We're like, what is that? <laughs> they're like this huge, enormous thing, and like different parts. You're putting it all together. I'm like, are you sure he's filming? That thing was huge. <laughs> I was like, what yeah. kind of camera is it, that? <laughs> it feels like IG88 from uh, The Empire Strikes Back. The, the, the it does a little yeah, bit, yeah. yeah. I know. I was like, whoa. <laughs> like, well, we got this covered. <laughs> Yeah, that thing was yeah. huge. That was really cool. Um, no, some holidays in the party. I met some really interesting people there. Yeah, people sure. I haven't met before. Yeah, they were yeah really it was nice. a really nice crowd of people. I mean, just everyone was easy to talk to and friendly, and it was just a really nice vibe. Yeah, it was really nice. Um, I met Greg Miller finally, like after yeah. <laughs> like after all these years. Like I saw him at the community booth at PXX, but he was busy. So then I went and saw him uh, at the party. And when I saw him, I was like, Craig! He was like, hi. I was like, let me hug you. And I hugged him for 10 seconds. I was like, please don't let me go. He was like, oh, I'm already holding on to you. I'm like, thank you. And I just had this one long, long awkward hug. <laughs> no, but after that, I got to talk to him for a bit. His girlfriend, Christine. And they were really amazing people, really nice people. Um, he was really awesome to do that speech during the whole um, thing with the cake. So he was really yeah, awesome yeah, to be great. nice. Yeah. That was so generous of you to do that too. That was really cool. That was, you know, one of the highlights of the evening. It was it was the tenth birthday. Like we can't let this possibility slip by whatsoever. Yeah. It's once in a it's a milestone. Like it has to be like partied. <laughs> it has to be expressed in a way where it's like, you know what, we gotta remember this forever. I don't care what happens. I'm just gonna <laughs> skydive with a parachute with Mr. Molecule on it. Like it's your tenth birthday, happy birthday. <laughs> like do something crazy. Like remember it. <laughs> and hopefully, yeah. Greg's speech and the cake. Hopefully that did the trick. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and I, the I don't think anybody's going to forget that part. That was memorable, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a tasty cake. Yeah. Oh, the guy at the cake shop was really nice. Um, He didn't even have a lock on his door. He was like, oh, just keep it open. I don't care. I'm like, really? It's like 10 o'clock at night. He was like, just keep it open. I'm like, nice. all right, have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a good guy. Um. Yeah, I mean, that was really cool highlights. Uh, I, the highlight for me was meeting all these people. I mean, I met some people who were using Global Planet as a classroom uh, education oh, yeah. type of thing. and they Yeah, we were ch chatting with those guys, too. Yeah. They were really yeah. awesome, yeah. like They were like, oh, well, first we're going to have Global Planet now for people, for whoever wants to learn design. And then after that, uh, well, we're going to make them graduate, and then they're going to learn from dreams and step up. I'm like, oh, that's cool. So from a 2.5D to a 3D experience. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a really cool thing to do. Then I saw some other game companies that were around. Pretty fun, too. Um, I got a lot of cards. Still in my folder somewhere. I was just looking for... I got cards from... I don't remember the guy's name. Nick was his first name, but I don't remember his last name. But he was one of those... He was from that group of people. Nicholas Cage? <laughs> yeah, different, different Nick. Um, they were from... I think they were from Montana. Is that right? The guys that were doing that... That, that were using Little Big Planet as a teaching school? Oh, I'd actually... I don't remember where they were from, honestly. <laughs> And I, I don't yeah. Know oh no, I think it was Matan. I had the card in my folder somewhere. I have to go find it. That yeah. was pretty cool, though. Way cool. Yeah, Let's see how they incorporate uh, dreams. So thoughtful. Yeah, I know. Like how they're gonna bring. Like they have to get a PS3 and upgrade to a PS4. Then they have well, an entire new hardware to work with. 
which would be pretty dreams, fun. I mean, like as a, as a as a teaching tool, Sarah and I were talking. Like, I mean, there's like art therapy for like you know, like a like you know, like as like a therapy a, method. Yeah, for, as a therapy, yeah. like a psychological therapy. Like, if you have kids that are going through therapy, you could have them just like like boot up dreams and have them like <laughs> you know, just have a, a whole therapy session based around dreams. I think most of the series creators in the Little Big Planet community would agree that creation is therapy, right. whether or not right. you call it that. It right. always is to some extent. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Like, I know people use MP2 a lot. Like, the Boys and Girls Club, I believe, use that as well. And, like, oh, wow. other um, other organizations are really cool. Like, that's a really, like, I wonder if me and Molecule is going to be doing an event where they're going to go to different places, like academies and, like, schools and stuff, and give them dreams to see what they create with. Maybe a part of a world tour game jam. That would uh, be really maybe, cool. Like, go world tour, like, go a little bit in Europe, Australia... Go to Canada, the U.S., um, other continents, and like visit other people and give them a charm of dreams. I really think that would be a first step towards world peace. Actually, yeah, wait. <laughs> go to the White House. Dreams. <laughs> My, there yeah, you go. Go to the White House. Go to NASA for crying out loud. Show them your invention <laughs> of eating this. I mean, if they can get aliens to like see what we created, they're going to be so jealous. Just watch. <laughs> they're like, whoa, you guys have dreams? Oh, my God. I <laughs> know. Yeah, it's kind of funny because I read this thing um, online that uh, say if aliens they exist, they, um, our signals from our TVs and radios and stuff, our TV shows, it can broadcast like light years and light years away. So it, the signal is really, really far. So imagine if um, NASA broadcasted dreams, like they get live stream footage all the way and perhaps some extraterrestrial <laughs> live saw it. They're going to be like, is that an imp? What, what, is it? Like, what do you even do? Like, do uh, I'd be creating <laughs> stuff. What, what, the thing is duplicating in the screen. What is the sorcery? <laughs> they 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 outvented us. Oh my god, retreat, retreat. <laughs> they could be watch they could be watching your live streams right now. Oh my god. <laughs> That's the beauty of technology. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> I'd be kinda of funny though, we see Sack Boy and be like, Is this what a human looks like? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Aliens think that we're actually all made out of cloth and stuff with cotton. Take us to your your sack boy. <laughs> oh, we're allergic to cloth. Retreat. <laughs> Earth is not a uh, friendly habitat <laughs> that'd be pretty funny yeah uh speaking of dreams like we saw like a lot of stuff um i know they broadcasted dreams in the community booth and stuff like not just the uh, psx but we saw like a good heap on pgw a lot of their live streams and stuff um stuff they made did you guys see the 3d uh, printed objects they made yes oh, yeah. there were, yes, I, were do you recall they put it on the party like next to the tv the yes. bear, Dave, the piano man, and Johnny's mech. Yes, yeah, uh, Francis, I Francis think, is the, the, um, the Oh, sorry, the bear, yes, the Francis. Yeah. And uh, yeah. they were giving away um, a Francis figurine at the community stage during, um, I think, was that the drawing contest? Yeah, yes. Day. Yeah. There was two of them, I believe. I held well, one. They did one on each yeah, day, right. actually. Yeah, I, I participated in the drawing contest on the first day. And then Wait, you were the there? Day, I, yeah, yeah. I, um, I was there I both drew, days. Uh, I didn't oh, see you. God. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I went up and I drew um, a little flower monster. Oh, <laughs> uh, what was the one that won? It was the... Um... Uh, it dragon. Was dragon. Yeah. Oh, that one. Yes, I remember. Yeah. I, didn't... Yeah. Oh, I didn't recognize it was you. I, I watched both of them. I sat and I watched them do their thing. I would be like, oh, my God, it's Pook. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have tweeted it. I'd be like, wow. I recorded it on my phone. I mean, it's really bad quality, of course, but I recorded it on my phone, and so now we have like proof that Kareem said that he likes Sarah's work. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Saving that one. <laughs> Save it. It's amazing. You got touched by royalty rather than a crown. <laughs> okay, please. Yeah, well, actually, it's kind of ironic that I, I did finally meet Alex Evans because, um, well, both of us have had the touching royalty pin in Little Big Planet since 2011 when we went right. to the uh, St. Louis community meetup. Although Alex Evans wasn't actually there, it was Spaff, and he put on an Alex Evans mask, and he high-fived everyone, and we all got the pin. And then now we actually have met Alex Evans himself. <laughs> I know. I got the pin from high-fiving Spaff 2014 at the PAX East, and then I high-fived <laughs> Alex. My, like, the way I introduced myself to the molecules was really weird. So here's two of my really awkward moments. Um, <laughs> one of them was I was sitting down... Remember Alex, you guys go with this one. So I was in the Twitch booth, and then I saw this dude with this recognizable blue shirt that's off from E3 somewhere and from PGW. So then I looked up, and I was like, oh my god, it's Alex Evans. And he was talking to people, and he was sitting next to Jenny, well, standing next to Jenny. And then I went up to Alex, and then I was waiting for him to finish, and he looked at me, and I was like, hi. And he was like, hi. I was like, oh my god, you're the guy from the internet. 
I was like, uh, yeah. And then he looked at Jenny. He was like, who is this guy? Jenny's like, oh, don't worry. It's fine. I'm like, he was like, uh, I'm like, I'm happy, dude. He's like, oh my God, that's you. And then he yeah, high five me. I mean, it was really funny. I was jumping. I'm like, you're that guy from the internet. I saw you on the internet. He was like, who is this guy? <laughs> and then my other one was, um, uh, when I met Saban for the first time, oh my God, Saban's amazing. She's like one of the most understandable women you ever meet. Like, she like she definitely deserved the award for 100 top women in the UK. Like, she's like incredible when you meet her. Like, after wow. you, like talk to her for a few minutes, she's really cool. Um, when I met her, uh, what happened was that I'm sitting next to John. John's messing in dreams, and I saw Saban through the glass coming into the door. I was like, oh my God, Saban! So I went and I opened the door. She saw me, and I was like, hello. She was like. Hi. I was like, hi. He was like, uh, hi. And I was like, <laughs> I'm happy to do. He's like, oh my god, it's happy to do. And then she hugged me. She was like, oh my god. It was like really cool. But like, I'm really bad at awkward like introductions. So like, I don't introduce myself first. I'm like, oh my god, hi, it's me. They're like, do I even know you? I'm like, I just watch you guys on the internet, you know, live streaming and stuff. Uh, and they're like, have I seen you before? I'm like, sort of. <laughs> That's really funny. I still have a good 48 people to do awkward introductions with if I ever see them one day. So I got plenty. <laughs> well, that, that, make, that makes it memorable. Yeah. It makes it really memorable. I know. It was really funny. It's always interesting when you meet people in person who you've been like talking with online for a really long time. Like when we met, I had never seen your face before, so I didn't recognize you, but like I totally know you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, didn't, like, I, I remember I saw your face at PSX and stuff, and I was like, oh, I yeah. know this person. Like, I, like, a couple of people I saw in a two-second glance, I'm like, wait a minute, I know this person. And I just saw them. Pictures help. See, that, that's why we have profile pictures on Twitter, so we know who, how people look like when we meet them in real life. And that's oh, yeah, either a good thing or a bad thing. I don't have my real thing. face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, that's, like, the best part about it. Like, we need people, because you can't just introduce who you are. You need to prove who you are. Like, do you have an idea or something? Like, seriously, <laughs> something we never expect people to say, only you would. Uh, heart for heart. That works. Congratulations, yeah. it's you. <laughs> you should get a photo ID that says Hyperdude. That would be cool. I did. Uh, oh, no, I don't actually. I should oh. get one, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was really fun. Um, that was some really cool highlights. Like, I didn't even know. I felt so bad. I didn't even know that they were going to be streaming with other media. I thought we were just streaming once with me and that's it. And then we were going to go do stuff with PSX. But no, apparently they were going to stream the whole entire day. And I didn't even know that at all. I wasn't like, oh I didn't know what was going to happen. So I like literally I was there for the whole time because I thought like the next stream was going to be the last stream and then they were like going to go and hang out check the exhibits. But apparently they had an appointment set up. I didn't even know that. So I felt really terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, so these guys are taking their turn now. So they're going to be using the TV. They're like, oh, no, they're streaming with us. I'm like, oh, we have appointments. I didn't know that. And I was like, oh, shoot, I should have just like let them do their thing. I didn't even know about that. Like it all yeah. slowly came up to me while it happened. <laughs> So I, I slowly, like, wait a minute. Oh, they were scheduling all of this. I didn't even know. I thought it was like a one-off type of thing. Oh, my God. It was so bad. Yeah, at one point, we were walking, like, we walked past the Twitch booth, and you guys were there live streaming again, and we're like, man, they've got it rough. Like, we can watch the live streams afterwards. Yeah. But, like, they're, they're in the booth the whole time. They're not going to get to, like, like recap all of the actual experience of that, like, we're getting walking around, like, going to all these different <laughs> demos and everything. So I was like... Oh my god, you guys are locked up in there the whole time. <laughs> I, I know um, John and Anton and Maya, um, they were streaming like 24-7. I know John and Anton, um, on the second day, they streamed for nine hours straight. Oh, so god. it was really insane. That's I know like, they were like, uh, by now I know like Anton's favorite Gatorade is Blue Gatorade. So now I can finally get that for him <laughs> if I see him streaming again. Replenish his health. <laughs> they had no Gatorade at PSX. I went to go get a Gatorade. Um, cause, um, it was Thursday, so I went to go get one, and then I went to every single concession stand in the entire event. Ran out, I ran out, oh. let me trade the back for you, sorry, I ran out, but here's a Red Bull, oh, wow. or I forgot what it was, it was, um, that back steamed. But, but yeah, they were like, I'm, they were like, okay, here we go, five bucks, I'm like, five bucks for this? Oh, <laughs> I'm like, oh, fine, I'll get it. <laughs> but, um, things are still, like, really, uh, expensive over there. But they had no Gatorade. Like everywhere I walk, I'm like, oh, hey, look, it's Gatorade. Nah, I don't. Uh, Gatorade. And then one time I go see Gatorade, there's nothing. <laughs> oh, speaking of traveling around the entire floor, I. Did you guys happen to notice when you left the second day that the escalator was like 
broken down, like stopped. Yes. Yes, we down. did. And we saw Kronos marching <laughs> down the escalator in the front of a crowd of people. It, it was, was really funny. Awesome. <laughs> he was in character. He's like, I mean, he, he was at the front of the crowd and it was just packed behind him. And he was walking down, standing character the whole time. And he got down to the bottom and everyone was like walking up behind him. And he's like looking and investigating and figuring out what was going on. It was awesome. Yeah, I have a confession to make. The reason why that stairs was standing still you broke frozen, it, didn't you? I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> I broke it. Oh. What did you do? <laughs> uh, my shoelace got stuck and dragged oh. me back. And security didn't help pull me out. Dangerous. Oh my god. You're lucky you didn't get eaten by it. <laughs> no, I looked at the girl behind me. When I walked down, my shoelace was stuck under the escalator. I was like, um, someone pull up my shoelace, please. <laughs> and she was trying to pull it out, and then security came by. You're we like, pull him out, and then oh they ended God. up pulling me out. They're like, do you tie your shoes? I was like, it was tied two minutes ago. <laughs> oh and then wow. ten minutes later, I walked, and the thing was stopped. See, there you go, making the first impression again. That's, that's, yeah, that's that was you making good. your impression on the Moscone Center West. Yep, <laughs> I know. I felt really bad. I was like, if I tell the molecules about this, they'll get really mad, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh, I funny. mean, like the, like that was that wasn't the only embarrassment thing too. I had one other embarrassment uh, story too. It was at the party, um, right when I was organizing everything to get the cake out. Um, like I knew I was gonna be standing up in front of people to do a speech or whatever. And usually when I'm about to do something really nerve wracking or like something like really nervous, or there's a crowd and stuff, I always blow up this really anxious silent fart. It's silent but deadly. <laughs> so what happened was that when I was about to go on. Um, they were about to get the cake on everything. I was like, oh, shoot. And then I accidentally blew out that part. And then I was walking, I went all the way to the back of the event. I started walking back and forth, trying to blow out the air. And then what oh. happened was that, um, I remember Saban was talking to Greg and she came to me and she was like, honey, are you okay? You're walking back and forth. Is everything fine? I was like, uh, I'm just weird. I'm good. I didn't <laughs> fire or anything. I'm just, I'm fine. She's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just weird. Just, uh, I'm fine. I'll be fine in a minute. I'm like, she's like, okay. And then she walked back and then I was like, <laughs> don't walk behind me <laughs> i think my fart cleared by then so thank god yeah well, so but now you told man. everybody some yes. secrets out yeah, secrets i just edited out no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no but i appreciate that she was chicken on me though that was really nice of her That's very thoughtful yeah very thoughtful of her um i didn't want to make a scene or anything i think when that happens like that, that one flaw you have to like, ruin everything and you have to isolate yourself away from the public just to make sure it's all gone. <laughs> <sighs> That's my life. I'm weird. I love it. it <laughs> well, at least you're being considerate of other people by isolating right. yourself. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, that part was deadly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was my embarrassing moment. The second well, one. Well, every everyone was drinking there, so probably yeah. everybody just assumed it was someone that was over there getting drunk or something. Yeah. Like that. Well, I spilled a little bit of a drink on myself, but at least it was on myself and not on somebody else, so that was okay. <laughs> a drink on the PS4 death kit. Alex Evans would never ever forgive me. Oh my God! If ever, like I, I didn't <laughs> drink so, but yeah, like if I'd be like, oh hey, that's so cool. Like I haven't seen myself drunk at all. And turning 21, to this day, I'm still scared to see myself drunk. So I'm like, if I got drunk, like, if I actually drank, I didn't drink. So, yeah, I didn't drink, for the record. Wow. If I didn't drink at the Mini Molecule place um, during the party, if I drank and got drunk, because I don't know how much I can do for a Linux if I drank before, totally. like, I'm really scared if I mess something up, like, I accidentally take the PS4 with me, or if I spill something <laughs> on it, or if I farted on it, or something like that. I don't know what I would do. So I'm like, okay, thank God I'm not drinking this time. Like, oh, I'm going to be like, here's Gene's <laughs> PS4, here's a giveaway, and she got the entire death kit. Who wants it? Who's going to win it? Or something, I don't know. I'm going to yeah, be like, oh, hey, get away these with edible that as an 3D statues, can I eat these? <laughs> these look really cool, yum. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Not, not, not the best I did not want to see me <laughs> <laughs> uh, But there is now a uh, 3D printer that prints in chocolate, apparently. Uh, so if you get one of those, you can create something in Dreams, and you could make an edible Dreams sculpture. <laughs> Which reminds me, if there's going to be another party for dreams they should bring a 3d printer with them so we Absolutely, see it alive that'd be awesome no but that it will take like five hours so, <laughs> to print it out right yeah, yeah it takes a while slow. yeah oh yeah i mean i haven't 3d printed anything before but i have seen them yeah we saw them at comic-con um, yeah. last year they were doing demos they were printing terminator heads yeah on 3d printer <laughs> not the most exciting thing to watch yeah <laughs> 
But it is really cool when you see it finally all done. Yeah, it's all about the payoff in the end. I mean, if you're recording video and then you can play it back in like three time, three or four times normal speed. Speed then it up, yeah. That is kind of interesting. That'd but be cool. Yeah, actually being there watching it, not that exciting. <laughs> Yet, but in the future, we'll all have one and it'll all be done just like a like cooking a microwave dinner. It'll be very exciting. <laughs> yes, this is, I just saw 3D print our um, uh, PS4 dev kits. That way, Sony won't have to worry about, um, <laughs> you know, us taking pictures of it. There you go. And That'd then you could cool. go and fart on a dev kit and destroy it. And you could just it's it not out. real. See? We broke it. And we ate it. PS4, greatness oh. awaits. The Chewy Center on the inside. It's a snack. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> oh, there you go. That would be amazing, actually. Edible console. Yes. That would be really fun. Or if, like, if you have like a CD case or something, and you'd be like, hey, if you eat to the center, you get a code for a pre order pack or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't accidentally eat the code. <laughs> don't accidentally eat the code. It's real paper. <laughs> It'd be like golden tickets from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Right. I know. That would be really cool, though. Then it would be like, eat, create, share. <laughs> <laughs> eat, create, eat some more. Eat, create, don't choke. I don't know, something like... Yeah, I noticed when I turned 21 yesterday, now I'm like becoming more adult. I'll have all these adult things to talk about. Before I used to be careful, now I'm like, okay, I'm laying my nerves off a little bit. <laughs> I'm talking about getting drunk and eating... Death kids, what's wrong with me? That's my life. It's all part of growing up, Danny. It is, yes. <laughs> Pretty soon this podcast is to be PG-13. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this dad is going to kill me. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, um, that was pretty fun. It's been a month, though. Can you believe it? Since the whole journey. That's crazy. Do you it's think... been a crazy month. <laughs> it's been a really crazy month. Do you think they'll ever do uh, PSX and San Francisco again? Well, I'm expecting that they're probably going to move it, you know, around so. between yeah. big cities, but I'm hoping they'll bring it back because be I nice. loved having it local. That was so cool. <laughs> I, I wish it was in Boston, but I don't think they'll ever do it in Boston. Not tonight. Who well, knows? I yeah. mean, we've had, we had Vegas and then San Francisco. It would make sense to do it somewhere on the East Coast next. All the way yeah. across the country. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys can fly over to my place. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> some Bostonian museums. So what did you do for your birthday? Uh, hmm. I wasn't <laughs> like, oh, uh, like I woke up to a blast of Twitter and Facebook stuff saying happy birthday to me. And then I got a message from me of all the kills saying happy birthday, which kind of blew me away. And yeah, I just wanted to come cool. again for that. Thank you so much. I didn't expect that, but thank you so much for everybody for doing that. I really appreciate it. Even if you weren't in the video, I still love you anyways, because you can cram so many people into a single frame of a video, but the message got across. <laughs> so thank you so much for everything. I appreciate it. <laughs> And then today, I got an extremely cold package. I was like, oh, it must be from the snow. And it was from Pennsylvania. I'm like, Pennsylvania? You ordered something from Pennsylvania? And then I opened it up, and then I, like, the first thing I saw was a big pack of ice. I'm like, what is this mess? Like, I opened up the box, it's like a big pack of ice. And my hands getting freezing. I'm like, wait, was this in Alaska or something? And then I took it, I found another big box. I'm like, what, what did I get from here? And I opened the box, and then I saw a cake. Like, or no, I then saw a box that said, bake them something. Like, I'm like, they order food online. See, the first time I did, was I like, drunk? Did I order something drunk and I ordered food <laughs> online? I never ordered food online before in my life. I'm like, I looked around. I don't see any beer bottle. I'll, I didn't, no, I'm pretty sure I didn't order anything. And why is that under my name? And then I opened up the the box and then it was a cake. It said, Happy birthday. I was like, Wait, what? And then I saw the car. It was Happy birthday. I opened it up. It was like, Happy birthday. Left on the molecules. I'm like, Wow. Oh my God. I wasn't drunk, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like seriously, um, I was like, holy cow! I was like, really? I didn't expect a cake at all. Like, this is the first time someone's ever sent me a cake from across the sea. It came from Pennsylvania, so it must have went through <laughs> Pennsylvania. That was a great red herring, by the way, saying that it came from Pennsylvania, but wasn't actually from Pennsylvania. Like, I was like, what's going on right now? I'm like, I have to go watch a movie. I have to do a podcast. Like, why is this so cold? What's in here? Like, I, like, and why did they put the ice first on top? It was like a big bag of ice. Like, shouldn't it be at the bottom? I was like, somebody accidentally sent me something inappropriate in the mail. Something that's really cold and it's hard. Yeah, like, it's I don't want to open this. It's really hard to open. <laughs> <laughs> and then below it was a kick. I was like, oh, okay, that explains a lot. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. But yeah, it was really huge. Like, and like me and Molecule, if you're listening to this, thank you so much for everything you've done. Like, literally, the message and the kick and everything. Like, like, all the love was sent across. And to Jenny, Jenny, thank you so much for doing, like, everything. Like, 
like one of the best community managers ever. And I said this before any of this happened. And I really do mean it. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you for listening to this. I love you and everybody there. Uh, thank you. I really appreciate it. And I'm finally 21. I can finally have a drink with you and Alex and Simon and everybody else's time. So I can't say no. I will have a drink. I promise sometime. <laughs> Just please make sure I don't get drunk. And I will be happy. That sounds like a challenge. That sounds like a challenge. Me and Monkey were really, like, were really um, protective of me at the party. Like, since you're 21, you can't drink, so please don't drink. And I was like, okay. It's like they were really, like, caring. So I appreciate that. <laughs> so, yeah. Now I can. You know what? I'm going to save my first drink when I, if I do see them, like, one day again. If we do end up going to a party sometime, uh, I will save my first drink with them. I'm going to save it. If I ever see wow. them, I'm going to drink with them for the first time. As long as they make sure I don't get addicted to it and drink too much and start going crazy, you know, <laughs> getting drunk, I will drink with them <laughs> for the first time. <laughs> it's my first drink. So here's to whoever in my future for the first drink. Cheers. Cheers. We... Cheers. <laughs> well, Media Molecule's always watching out for you. <laughs> I, I, I really appreciate it. I didn't expect so much love. Like, I don't know any other game company who has sent a fan a cake from across the country to <laughs> the U.S. And it's like, wow. It's like really that was pretty amazing. awesome. <laughs> I know. I'm like, if I was like 12 years old, I'd be like, mommy, 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 we got free food. No, <laughs> I'm like, oh, crap, it's a medium molecule. <laughs> uh, where the time's gone by. Yeah, holy cow, it's been an hour already. Way to go, yeah. guys. Yeah, it's been an hour. Wow. Yep. Um, so we talked PSX. We talked a bit about dreams and our impressions. What do you guys think is going to... Uh, happen for dreams link here on out this is the year for the beta early 2016 any month it, now it really literally could be any day now we don't know <laughs> um yeah well i mean we've i'm heard afraid the beta is going to be probably a fairly extended beta and it's going to increase in size as it goes along so i think it's going to be a really big year for dreams mm -hmm. and um and i think they're doing this beta the right way you know starting small going bigger and i think when the game does come out and go you know, the full version for everybody, I think it's going to be a really good game because of all that testing that's being done right now. Oh, totally. Yeah. I, um, I'm, I'm going to be really excited to see the, like, the actual interactivity, like, the logic and how all that works. I haven't seen, uh, I don't know if I've seen any of how that actually is functioning. Like, um, Not much of it. No. Yeah. Uh, I do have a glimpse based on what I was told in the interview. Mm -hmm. Like, I can give you a quick rundown right now. All right, so things are starting to change, but, like, as every other feature they have in Dreams... Uh, they want everything to feel performance-based. Like, it's easy and it's quick. And at the same time, they have logic tools for you. They have movers, they have pistons, all that jazz. Um, triggers, switch zones. But um, for logic, the main performance base of it, what you do is that um, you have an action, right? So you take a move controller, and then during this action, you can hit record. And then you can be like, okay, during this moment, I want this to happen. I want three rocks I want to put in. I want this rocket ship to go here. I want this thing to go there, and this to go there, and this to go there. It's like you're controlling, you free, it's, it's like you freeze time, and you're moving wherever you want, and then you hit play, and it will all happen. So that's basically what logic is like. So it's like, say if you have a bridge, when this person crosses the bridge, you just hit record, do all the actions that affects they want, want it to happen, and then stop it, hit play, and then when you cross the bridge, all those stuff will happen. So in a way, it's a bit animated, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Yeah. So that's kind of the way um, logic is going to be based on what Alex told me. That sounds very intuitive. I mean, that sounds yeah. much more accessible than having to like, I mean, like, you know, just in the evolution of little big planet going from like LBP one through all of the logic and LBP two and everything like that, that was a huge evolution and that made all of those functionality much more accessible to normal people. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but like, like that sounds like, you know, the next inevitable phase that sounds like pretty much any, you know, anybody that can pick up a controller will be able to do it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I think it's going to make it really, really easy for people to learn. To do it very quickly, and I think create do, time is going to go down. Because you can, yeah, you can do it so fast. You can do it really um, advanced too, but um, uh, the thing is that it's not just the logic though. Like the logic, one thing Alex told me, I recall they had a prototype scripting program uh, that they used where you can code your stuff and import it to the game. I believe, from what I was told, but they scrapped it because they didn't feel performancy enough, hmm. and they used it actually in the E3 trailer. Um, to do some things in it, which is pretty cool. But he said that even though it's in the back burner, if the community wants it, they'll see to put it again. So community, I want you to do hashtag uh, dreams programming and tweet at MM Alex. And I want you to, to tweet him saying, hey, I want this thing to test. I want I want to use it as a tool. I want it to do programming <laughs> and code. 
So please do that for me. Uh, if you uh, tweet at Bubble Dreaming as well, I'll retweet it and maybe we can actually get Alex Evans to at least give us a taste of the program and thing. I mean, the deal is that the code is there, it's all done. So if they want to bring it back, they can. So that's really uh, cool. Yeah. So hashtag uh, dreams programming. You know what to do, guys. Go, 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 go. <laughs> <laughs> get out there and tweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gonna have to use the community. <laughs> the big thing. Power yeah. But like the beta, it's a bit like like I said before, it was a bit scary because um, uh, first of all, I'm worried about one thing: dream bubble crashing because everyone's gonna <laughs> assume the code is gonna be on the sites and stuff. Like uh-huh. they're gonna assume that I'll be just. So, and I remember back in Paris Games Week, um, the site crashed. It had a couple of database errors because we had over like 200 people online at the same time uh-huh. and multiple times and chat was overfilling and it was lagging and it was like, it was, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect it. So now I imagine if the beta uh, gets announced and then like the site goes haywire, it's going to be much more. I can't wait to see what happens. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, we're not a part of it as far as I'm concerned. I mean, if they want us to be a part of it, we're more than welcome to. And I'm sure you guys too and everybody. But um, uh, if, like, for some reason, we get a huge traffic at uh, Dream Bubble, I'm ready for it. I am ready to fight the evilness. It's going to be scary, <laughs> but it's going to be so much fun. But especially since people are going to be posting tutorials and videos and stuff. And we want to encourage people to share their thoughts about the beta if it's allowed. Because I know at first it's going to be private and then public. And we are allowed to um, um, use Share Factory to capture footage and stuff. I recall Alex saying that. Well, that would be really nice if we can, because I know when there's a beta going on that's private, everybody else always wants to see what's happening in it. <laughs> yeah, it's like live streaming too. Yeah. Like like they said before, it's uh, everything Dreams is gonna be live, whatever they meant by that. So uh, that's probably gonna be like live streaming and stuff, which is pretty fun. Uh, oh yeah, and the sound and music creating. They didn't show anything about that, have they? I don't think so. No, I don't think we've really heard anything about that yet. No. Uh, if I recall correctly, like I wrote a transcript of the interview I did with um, Alex Evans because um, while one of our headsets were malfunctioning. That's right. Yeah, and we couldn't yeah. hear and yet. That was so cool of you to write all that Seriously, out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was like after, winter, like after my um, semester ended at university. Like, the first thing I did, I was like, okay, time to write this uh, transcript. Because everyone wanted yeah. it. It took quite a while, but it was well worth it. I enjoyed it. And, like, I, when I did it, I used the YouTube video speed at 0.05. So, like, I slowed it down really, really slow. And our voices were in slow motion. And it, everyone <laughs> sounded so funny throughout the whole entire interview. And because I was trying to capture every word. I wanted to, like, post a video of it in slow motion. That like must that have taken was, forever to get through that, man. It took me around five, six hours, oh. nonstop, but I managed yeah, to probably work. Yeah. It was fun. I mean, like, hearing dreams and arrows <laughs> and PSVR in slow motion was so funny. You see our reactions? It was worth it. It was worth it. And it was an honor, as always, Alex and Kareem. Thank you so much for having me do that. I wish I could do it again with you guys in time, like everybody else. Um, yeah, speaking of, um, yeah, the music and the anime during the interview, uh, he said basically it's performance, you know, like my guess is that you can like, play the drums with the move and stuff, like bang, mm-hmm. pot stuff. Mm-hmm. And you can, when you record stuff with sound, like doing that kind of stuff, you can record over it and we make other people's sounds and stuff like that by like shaking a can or like banging on a wall or something with an object. You, you can create sounds over sounds. And then I'm pretty sure, like you told me that controller is mapped uh to like a button is mapped to every controller to make a certain sound or amplify it i think uh then again he told me everything's placeholder but i'm not sure if um it's gonna be the same or not but, like every button is mapped with the move controller so you can use that to amplify the sound that you're making and stuff like that so making sound effects and music is gonna be really fun nice. yeah that's gonna be cool and they've also said that um we're probably gonna be able to import our own sound effects through a website as well, um, that was mentioned at some point, yeah. and I'm curious to see whether um, people who are, you know, like the really serious amateur musicians out there who do their own musical performances outside of Little Big Planet or anything on the PlayStation, if um, if they'll be able to actually import their own songs, complete songs that are original works of music, that would be pretty cool too. I think that's what they did with um, uh, the AT trailer. Like they made the music for that, and I think they imported it. Because think of it this way, um, it's a it's a game engine, just like Unity and Unreal, but with the game with it too. 
to make it enjoyable in a way. So like any other game engine, you can import stuff. You know, music, sound effects, texture packs, and everything. So I imagine that will be the same way with Dreams, except it's in a game form. So that that will be my guess. But yeah, like you said, Pikachu, we can like um, import sounds and stuff. Copyright is gonna be a bit crazy since it's under Sony's uh, servers and stuff. Mm. Yeah, that'd have to be like a review process or something for everything that gets imported. Well, that's why it would go through the website because, um, like, if you put a song in a video on YouTube that's a copyrighted yeah, song, YouTube YouTube sees the waveform of that song and says, hey, that's copyright, you can't put it up there. So as long as they have that same sort of copy protection on their website, they can make sure that everything, the sound effects and music people upload is original yeah, and they the won't have any it. issues with yeah, copyright. Like yeah, uh, it's going to be like, say if someone, like, ripped a song from YouTube, like, uh, hmm. Name a song. Sugar. <laughs> Sugar Spice. They're really nice. Or, no, I don't know. Um, like say this, like a song. Uh, Gangnam Style. <laughs> you used to call me on my cell phone. No, but um, like say they ripped off a song and like straight from Taylor Swift, Bebo, or whatever, and then um they ripped it off and they put it inside their uh level. Like that would be copyrighted, obviously. Right. right. I wonder if they're working with lawyers, something to look over it but yeah the website is going to be key like the website tying into um their game is going to be like a huge benefactor to all the features it's like yeah, it's sure. going to be really um because i know it'll be planet right i'll be paid on me you can queue levels you can select level and you can play it and um that's really cool so i'm pretty sure they're going to take that kind of concept that connection between the console and the computer and increase it in a way where it's more uh, usable, more doable, and be really cool and innovative. Yeah, yeah, it'd be yeah. kind of fun. I mean, like, imagine, like, they also talked about PSVR with um, oh. uh, <laughs> dreams. That's gonna be really cool. Man, yeah, we got to do the VR. That was one of the highlights. You know, we put it off at, at PSX. We put it off. We just there's so much other stuff to do. Well, we we um actually we weren't able to sign up for the VR because the website was having problems when we tried oh, to yeah. sign up and um. There, they had online signups for the VR ahead of time and there for the VR demos. And there was this whole problem when um, we tried to sign up and the website wasn't working. And then when we came back later, it was all full. And um, <laughs> so we missed it. But of, yeah, there's some type of like loophole where people some were, issue, were able to yeah. like, like sign up for like you're only supposed to sign up once. Um, but people were signing up like once per hour or something, something like that. Something like yeah. that. Um, but then when we got there, they, they actually had like a, sort of an extra time slot. The last hour of the day was set aside. Like so, in. yeah. And so we just went and got in line and we ended up getting to do VR demos at the oh, very man. end of the very last oh, <laughs> of PlayStation experience. So yeah. Cool. I did the London heist. It blew yeah. me away. I was like, finally, we actually have VR that is actual VR. Like it actually takes you there. It takes like two seconds to kind of get past the... Um, uh, you know, just to adapt to it, and uh, and then you're just totally there. You're like in. Oops, that's our phone. Sorry, hang on one sec. There. We oh, go. Um, but uh, yeah, and Sarah, you did the office. I did the um, job simulator. Job simulator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was it was cool. So imagining dreams under that um, in that scope is just like I. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm drooling just thinking about it. Um, for me, I signed up for the uh, the PSX app on the phone. Uh-huh. And it was yeah, like that's a, what we were trying to do, but it wasn't working for us. I didn't know about it until on Twitter. Like, um, I there was like eight spots left. I just signed up for the one at two o'clock. Oh wow. And just the um the rigs was gone, but there were a whole bunch of other demos available. Mm -hmm. I did Drive Club. Oh cool. Yeah, that so, one looked fun. It was fun. Um when I tried it on, um the three sixty rotation thing is kinda cool. But the thing about my experience with my headset, like if I look down, I could see my pants. So it wasn't completely oh. covering my eyes. So I was like, whoop, there goes oh, that wow. immersion. And then the drive club, the at times the the picture was a bit grainy. I don't know why it was, but mm. like I could see the pixels um, and the borders around the PSVR, like the black borders, like they can't ruin that immersion that you're in there because you see borders next to you, like in the corner of your eyes. Oh. Like I don't know if you noticed the borders. No, uh, I didn't, but I didn't I'm, yeah, yeah, for me, I, I didn't see it, but I'm, you know, I'm small enough. The headset was like totally covering my eyes and everything. Oh no, I saw like, um, like a black border around the screen and uh, like, no. yeah, it was like, it was a really thin border. It kind of ruined my experience. Mm. I'm sure it's a really great, um, yeah. uh, thing to use. I liked it and I, I wasn't dizzy at all. And it's like when you put it on, like you can see the two holes where the eyes go, right? And then after a while it blends into full screen. 
totally. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it like that, that was pretty cool. But, um, but there was no motion sickness and stuff, which is pretty nice and everything. Yeah, yeah uh, same for me. I get motion sick very easily, but right. I had I had no problem while I was in VR at all. Yeah. I wanted to try it again because I wanted to try a different demo. Maybe it might be different for me. Maybe the heads the headset wouldn't be that loose, or maybe it was just my okay. bad luck. I'm pretty sure it'd be a real, really great thing to have, especially for dreams. So I'm willing to give it a go again. I wish I had. Well, I did have another appointment. Um, my friend he couldn't go to his appointment, so he wanted me to try rigs, but I couldn't go because I was doing something. It was like five o'clock. It was late. But I should oh, have done okay. it. I would have gotten another impression of it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just loved it. I mean, I'm not a first person shooter type gamer, but like playing London Heist, I was like, <laughs> I was ready to do like tuck and rolls and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> it was like it was, it was crazy. It was very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well i mean like you know there wasn't really a lot of room and you know your your headset is attached by a cable so you don't actually want to do a tuck and roll but like the, <laughs> for me the like the in, the intuition was there like i was it was a very like a like a knee-jerk reaction you know people are shooting at you you're hiding behind a desk and i was trying to like pick off one of the bad you know one of the baddies and i wanted to like like duck down behind the desk and roll out and pick him off you know it's like yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy yeah, job simulator was much less actiony than that, but I mean, I was like in this totally. It it wasn't trying to be realistic at all. It was like a cartoon simulated world, and I was like throwing coffee cups across the office and <laughs> wow, plugging plugging things in and unplugging stuff, and pouring coffee on the floor and throwing donuts and stuff like that. <laughs> typical day at the office. Yeah, you know, typical day. Just photocopy some books and throw some donuts on the floor. The playroom looked fun. <laughs> the playroom and. There was another one I saw for what it was called, but yeah, the playroom looked a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. What was the one the the roller coaster that was like a like a haunted? Oh, that yeah, I forgot what that one was called, but that, that haunted was, roller coaster yeah. looked really cool yeah, too. It was very scary. I wonder if they're gonna have PSVR PAX East this year. Oh, uh, maybe. Right. So I'm really PlayStation focused. That Oculus Rift, mm -hmm. which is six hundred dollars, which I'm not gonna buy, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's a good product. Maybe a Best Buy or something if I this year there, or but some. Imagining dreams under those under those pretenses. Oh it's yeah. Like I mean, that's just gonna it's gonna take away all of your free time. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I can see myself getting another PS4, or like another computer, setting up a mini studio in my basement with two other people and making stuff in dreams. That would be awesome. Oh yeah, we're yeah. we're talking about getting another PS4 so that we can both another PS4 and another set of Move controllers so we can both create at the same time. Sure. There we go. <laughs> Because we've got so much free time. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if me and Molecule will end up doing an event where it's like, hey, we're going to give you a PS4 dev kits and a couple of moves and dreams. Make something, make us a game. Like, whoever developer is interested, make something and see what you can come up with and see what they come up with. That would be a pretty nice. cool uh, initiative. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then they can get, like, troll us and, like, E3, where we see a really <laughs> great game. Whoa, some yeah. news is created. This doesn't look, look like anything we've seen before. And then out of nowhere, Alex Edmund comes up and is like, ha, huh, it was made in dreams. Got you. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, that'd be really cool. Like, is it made, like, I don't know, like, America Solid in dreams? Like, legit, like, they, like, it's seamless levels. Like, the loading screen is just, like, a little mm. link. Like, it's bright, and then you go to the next level. Well, it doesn't have to be bright. I think you can customize it. I don't know. They've tried to do other ones. Transitions. So that, that's what they called. But if you can put like a loading screen instead of like a bright light, that'd be a lot more realistic. Totally, like a preloader or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, everything's dynamic. I know he, Alex working on Mirages. I'm not sure if he um, cracked on that yet, like figured it out or something. Mom, uh, I'm curious to see what they were originally. Hopefully, if he figures it out, we can see a taste of it in the beta. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, we covered PSVR. In dreams, we covered dreams, we covered PSX. Oh yeah, I played Handlander. That was a pretty fun game. I didn't even know it was made about Double Fine until like, the next day I looked it up. That was pretty funny. Which game? Uh, Headlander. Um, well, I think we we were watching people play. We we're kind of um we were kind of spectators more at PSX. Like we didn't wait in line to play a whole lot of demos, but we wandered around and watched pretty much every demo being played, you know, by other people, um, just looking over shoulders and. Saying, oh, wow, that looks really pretty. <laughs> like, like Battlefront. I mean, again, it's like a first-person shooter and like, sure. totally not our style. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. 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 It was, I mean, it's a beautiful game. Like, yeah, we so just stood well there watching people play it. <laughs> just, yeah, really just, I mean, 
Very successful. Oh, I remember now. Um, The Last Guardian. Did you guys see that thing in the left far left? We oh, did. Yes. That was oh, amazing. Yeah. That was that was cool. My mind. It took me a while to actually realize that it was actually interactive. I thought, wow, lovely big screen of a big beast in a yeah. cage, whatever. But then actually watching people like take pictures with the, you know with their cell phone, the flash, you know, flashing it, and then the thing re- reacting and getting angry is like <laughs> they were holding up stuff too. Like they were holding up like um. A- yeah. That shield thing. Yeah, it's like yeah. a purple shield. I don't it's something from the game or is it Um yeah, I think well I was reading about it and um I think it's gonna be something that's incorporated okay. in the game. It's like a shield or something that your character might have, but when the Guardian sees it, um I think his eyes were turning yeah, red yeah, and yeah. It gets, <laughs> it gets upset, it backs up, it growls at you and yeah. It's, it's really cool. Well. And you're holding a barrel up in the the um, Guardian was following the barrel. We were holding up the barrel through the screen. It was really cool. Wow. That was one of my biggest things. The Balaborn booth was cool. I liked all those life-size statues. Dark Souls mm-hmm. 3 with the real smoke and bl- fake blood. Oh, that, that, was was exciting. Exciting. Yeah. that was, that was really a cool little cool. expo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Naruto was there. I don't know if anyone cared about Naruto. I love Naruto. <laughs> it was my favorite. That- Fat Princess was a huge... That was very popular there. Yeah. I didn't play the game. I like, I saw the devs. I was going like, to congratulate them about it, but I didn't play the game. Uh, yeah, we stood in line for a while to try and play it, and the line was not moving at all. And we were like, okay, we just want to go and see some other stuff. Yeah, very popular, though. Like, yeah. everybody had... They were giving away those little cardboard helmets. Yeah. <laughs> I, saw those. I saw those. There was, like, yeah, two yeah. in front of the TV and the Twitch booth. I didn't know if there were anybody. Yeah. So I didn't take it. I was like, can't see this at the airport? I don't think they will let me. I saw it. I didn't bother. The swag bags. Oh, that was pretty cool. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Generous. Yeah. Very generous. Like, yeah. they actually look like shopping bags from the PS yes. store. Yeah. And came with well, the poster. Can, right, yeah, you unboxing. Use them when you go shopping, you know, when you go get your groceries, you can say, yep, I was there. <laughs> That yeah, my there. only complaint about the swag is that last year you got to choose your t-shirt size, oh, yeah. and this year yeah. you did not. And I look a little ridiculous in my extra large PlayStation Experience t-shirt. <laughs> it, it was an extra large shirt. I, yeah. I don't know what the size was. I just put it on. I'm like, yeah, it fits they, me out they, here. they were all extra larges, and that's like several sizes too big for me. So, yeah. <laughs> but there was a lot of swag this year. Last year, um, they didn't actually give away quite as much stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't think. Um, and yeah, it was really nice having the bag to just carry your stuff around. And on the end of the last day, they had extra swag bags, so we each picked up a spare. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, I remember on the second day, when, uh, Crystal and I, we went to the booth. Uh, we opened it up. There was like three swag bags in the corner. No one was touching them. She was like, do you want these? I'm like, sure, why not? <laughs> then yeah. I gave them to Jenny and Alex, I believe. I was like, you can oh, give these man. away. I'll need them. Oh, and they were pretty cool. Uh, yeah, but that was really fancy, though. Uh... Wow. Well, it was a good way, too, because it's not been 20 years of um, PlayStation as well over there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That was pretty fun. Uh, when, there was, like, two um, PlayStation people I was trying to find over there. I couldn't find out. Someone was going to visit them. They were everywhere. Like, the media booth in the second floor, I wish I had access to it. It looked really cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah I saw some pictures. That, parties going yeah. On. yeah. <laughs> I saw like, some Twitter pictures from there. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, I, I peeked into it. When I was walking to the PSVR, I played some games in the second floor. I met the Radio PS guys. I don't know if you know them. I also met um one of them, um, Andrew, who was uh, there. It was really cool. He was from Boston, too, so he flew all the way there to be there, like wow. me, <laughs> which is really Hardcore fun. Fans. Hardcore. Yeah. yeah, Hardcore fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, and then no, pretty much done. I walked around a lot, saw a lot of cool stuff. I saw Meredith, uh, I don't know if no Meredith, she was filming the PS Access or something. And then I saw... Oh, we bumped into her to her hairdresser on yeah. the escalator on her way out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Her hairdresser? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah. It was on the escalator that I stopped? Yep, it was, yep, that, it was that one. That one. Why yeah. is it always me? Small world. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, and the Final Fantasy VII remake, that was very I saw uh, people were hyped yeah. about it, yeah. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. Did you see the video that they had made with all of the fan interaction, like the one guy that was crying? The crying guy, the yeah. Crying guy? <laughs> no, I did not oh, actually. That I need to see that later. Yeah. It was good. <laughs> yeah. Uh no, it was really fun. Hopefully next year will be a lot of fun wherever it is. I don't know if I will be going next year, but I'll try to put some pocket money inside. It was fun. It was worth it. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll have to see ourselves because we already got our badges for Comic Con this summer. Oh, so wow. we know we're doing that. And... Where's that this year? San Francisco? Oh, uh, that's no. The Comic Con is always in San Diego. It's always yeah, in San, San Diego. Diego. Comic Con. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's in the name. Yeah. 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 Um, There's New York too. I almost went to the one in Boston, but um. There's nobody going that new, so I didn't go. The New, new uh, York one's pretty famous. That one looks pretty exciting too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty big. Yeah, yeah. but I'm more of a games guy than the comics. But I'm also well, like, there's a lot of integration so, between the two. Yeah, I'm yeah, not a huge sure. comic fan either, but I just I love cosplay and I love the scene, and it's yeah. just such a cool group of people to be hanging it's around really with. It's more of, a, of like a melding of like sci-fi and fantasy stuff. I mean, yeah. it's it's roots is in comic books, of course, but like there's so so much crossover between comics and games and movies and stuff. It's kind of everything at this point. And it is where like the the cream of the cosplay co- crop turns up for, sure. <laughs> for that. You know, it's they have this masquerade contest um, oh. where they actually give prizes for the best costumes, and you have to make your own costume. And just that day alone is like there are so many people in these amazing outfits everywhere. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, our first year there, we saw a, um, a seven-foot um, Optimus Prime. That yeah. Was, like, it was just some fan that made his own Optimus Prime outfit, and he was walking around on these stilts. I, actually, it might have been hydraulic. It was hydraulic, um, he yeah. Had, he had, like, there was, like, like fog coming out of, like, the, those, you know, like, fake pistons, and he had, like, LED lights all over him, and, like, you know, voice modulator. It was, like, just one of the things you see walking around on the cosplay floor. Yeah, you, know, you like, just feel like you're on a movie set all the yeah. time. <laughs> it's crazy. Wow. But, yeah. We'd love to go to PlayStation Experience again next yeah, year too. Well, like, if, you know, um, I was just thinking if we like can. the the, uh, the uh, there's The Witcher. There's a guy from The Witcher mm-hmm. that was walking around. Yep. Geralt. Yes. 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 There was a lot of mascots. There was the Sack Boy and Ansok and um, Scoop oh, there. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, I took a picture with Atwa and Iota. Thank oh, you, yep, Rex. Yep. Design those characters. They're really warm and ugly. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, it was there tons. Was PSX one also. Yeah. 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 yeah PSX. Right, that's, yeah, I was talking about yeah. PS. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, you, were, you mean they were at the piss? Um, they were, they were in the, at the Vegas. At PSX. the Vegas. PSX, at the Vegas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, where do they uh, store all these costumes? I mean, like, they have like 50 of them. And every year I don't they get know, new games. Those were like the exact same little big plant costumes that were at Vegas. I mean, yeah. it looked like literally the, the same actual outfits. So I don't know if they just have a bunch of them or, yeah, do they just store them somewhere? <laughs> I mean, like, if they, like, travel with it too, it's kind of crazy. I mean, like, yeah. Every year they're gonna be new games, so you're gonna need new cosplay costumes. So where do you store everything? <laughs> so like Somewhere a PlayStation there's a museum. warehouse yeah, full some, of some costumes. Big vault in Utah, probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That'll be really crazy. <laughs> it's like you you like you stumble upon a, a manufacturer factory with a PS logo on it, you walk inside and see all these costumes <laughs> and wires like looking at you, I'm like Okay, then we go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute, it's Crash Bandicoot. It's true. <laughs> Everybody go crazy. <laughs> Not supposed to be in here yet. <laughs> That'd be so funny. No, I'm pretty sure they're probably making another crash. Um, yeah. Hopefully they'll announce it at E3 because well, it wasn't an accident that he wore that T-shirt. <laughs> I know that's, that's a fact. I, like, and it's Sean Lloyd. I mean, he wore a T-shirt yeah. before, and next big conference they announced something. Something's gonna happen. They probably got the rights back. I don't know from Activision. Mm-hmm. Because Activision, I believe, didn't make any um, Crash games in a while. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, yeah it's been a while. Yeah. I don't know where. A game for the Wii U, Crash Bandicoot. Damn it! <laughs> we can't, really get the, can't get the copyrighted rights now. <sighs> All right, well, we're approaching 90 minutes into this podcast. Where you go, guys? Oh, wow. yeah. that, that went by really yeah. fast. <laughs> All right, well, let's see. We covered Dreams, Dreams, PSX. More Dreams. Uh, more Dreams. <laughs> <laughs> We're dreaming about Dreams. Dreaming about Dreams. Daydreaming. Dreaming. dreaming. Mm-hmm. dreaming uh, dream, yeah. And, no, oh, that's all. Like, is there any other thoughts you guys want to talk about here? Just that that party was the best party we've ever been to. <laughs> I know. Like, it was really generous of them to invite us. Yeah. Like, I'm really happy about it. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Like, I know, and wherever there's going to be a party, it'll be really good. I mean, Jenny and Alex are f- phenomenal, and they plan everything, and, like, the Dreams wall and everything. The Paris yeah. one looked really oh, good, man. too, they, when they planned that. Yeah. It's really cool. Like, when I heard they invited over 100 people, um, when I got there, I was like, okay, this is going to be a bit more bigger than I expected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. When, when, we were, when, we, when Sarah first heard about it, you know, and she offered for me to videotape it, you know, it was just kind of, kind of like an aside idea. 
And uh, Jenny was like, oh yeah, that sounds like that sounds cool. But we didn't know how many people were going to be there. We found out where the event was. So we looked online to see what it was like. And we're like, okay, it's either going to be like just a few people at one of these booths or they're going to have the whole place. So we need to like <laughs> figure out, you know, like, do we need to try and record the whole event? Or are we just going to have like one little camera on a tripod? Or what are we going to do? And then like we showed up and, and she's like, oh no, it's the whole place. We're going to be packed. It's like, oh, cool. <laughs> oh, that was nice though. Like the door was like right next to us too. We just go outside yeah. to get fresh air. Yeah. yeah. I met I met the first ever Dream Bubble uh, fan in real life too. Oh, cool. At Fanny Medium. He was like, oh, uh, where do you get from? I'm like, oh, I, uh, I do this fan site thing, uh, Dream Bubble. I was like, oh, yeah, I signed up there a while ago. I'm like, are you serious? The first Dream Bubble <laughs> fan. Go, but yeah, and I was like, oh my god, and I met him. And we took a picture and stuff. It was really cool. It's kind of surreal, though. I mean, like, think about it. Like, there's a site that was created, and people went on it, and you met someone who went on it they don't even know about it in real life like wow i don't know yeah, like it's probably really surreal <laughs> yeah i know it's really crazy like wow people actually like you know they go on it and stuff and like, people love it and everything it's like wow like the thing you were working on over the summer like the code and everything it's like uh wow this actually was made and like the graphics and stuff made my friends and everything and design and like wow this thing we created it's like wow imagine what it's gonna do in the future and like i didn't even realize it was gonna be that important like i just wanted to make it fancy for fun you know and all this started to happen and i was like whoa and then and you you spent your entire summer pretty much working on that i website, did right i yeah. can like pretty much what happened was that june 15th i wanted to do a fan site when alex revealed uh the game an e3 no actually um I do have a confession to make. I was planning to make a fan site the year before, when they, um, like a year after they announced the, they were working on a take demo for animation and stuff. Like I had no clue what the game was going to be about. And even to this day, like people don't know what the game is going to be about. So that doesn't help at all. But um, <laughs> like uh, before that, I didn't know what it was going to be about, but I knew I wanted to make something for it. So I like, I still on Google Drive from 2013, I have a whole bunch of concept art I, that I made with move controllers and everything. Oh, cool. um, yeah. And then like, 2015, uh, when they revealed more about it, I wanted to make a fan site. And what happened was that when I wanted to do it by myself, I was like, holy cow, like, what form, like, what software do I pick? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And, like, it's my first time starting a forum because I've been a little bit planet, like, I knew Central, but, like, I didn't, like, mess around with the controls and stuff. So what happened was that I asked people around, hey, do you want to make a forum for a site with me? Like, yeah, I suck at designing and drawing, so it'd be cool if you guys can, like, design it and stuff. I'll, like, code it and, like, like you know, host and everything for you guys, do all that stuff. And then nobody wanted to do it. And what happened was that when I was my friend Claude the Clown Steven, when I told him uh, uh, I wanted to make a fan site, he, he was like, oh, hey, someone wanted to make a fan site for Dreams 2, but they didn't want to do it alone. They wanted someone to do it with them to do the code and stuff. I'm like, are you serious? And then he was like, yeah. Uh, and then the guy, um, Tyler, you guys know Tyler, right? Yeah, I know Tyler. Yeah, um, I knew him before on Little Bit Planet. He DM'd me, and he was like, hey, I heard you were making a fan site. Uh, Cloud told me, do you want to make one? I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Now I want like, you know, I have someone to make one with now, so now I won't feel that nerve-wracking anymore. So from there, uh, I... It was like June seventeenth, I believe. From there, and I was taking a summer course too, so it was kind of a mix. Oh, man. Uh, I told him I was like, "All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Let's come up with a name." And then we came up with a name, and we came up with really terrible names, mostly because um, <laughs> what happened was that um, when we looked for our website name, it was all taken. Uh, um, and the one we settled for was um, Community Dream Space. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and Tyler came up with that. It. it was not that bad. I mean, the URL was gonna be like Community Dream dot space. So when we did that, uh, uh, we were like, okay, cool, so that's fine. You know, it's the space for the community dream. And then what happened was that later on, we tagged Crispy and, you know, you know Crispy Cream, right? Crispy Cream, yeah. Yeah, okay, Kale. Uh, he, you know, we were like, oh, well, you know, we need someone who's experienced with forums and stuff to help come along. So we asked Crispy, and he said, yes, he'll join us. And then when I asked him, uh, he brought Santa on. You know, look like. Yes. Yeah, so he brought look like on. And then we had five people, and then I asked Claw, obviously, because he's the one who got us together. Hey, do you want to help us? He said yes. So then from there, we started focusing together what we wanted to do. And then Santa was like, hey, uh, for a name, how about Dream Bubble? Since, you know, there was bubbles in the trailer, and it was really kind of cool. Like, you know what? Yeah, Dream Bubble was really good. And I was like, all right, awesome. 
So I spent like a day trying to figure out how to cancel the domain name I bought from the Dream Space. <laughs> oh, and man. then I got the other one. And then I ended up finding a host. Thanks to Bag it had Inc. He recommended Bluehost. So I ended up doing that. And then, you know, from there stuff happened. And then we were like brainstorming. My very first forum that I used was Envision Powerboards. You know, the one a little bit network uses. You know that one, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's the one we went with first. We went through three or four different softwares. And we did concepts, all of them. And we studied them hard. It was intense. And then after that, we experimented with uh, PHP board. That free one. The uh -huh. my, PH, my PHP board. Uh, Blackboard or something. And we... I bookmarked like over a thousand add-ons and I installed them all. <laughs> see where I was like, yeah, no, this is not going to do the trick. That was a crazy night. And then after oh, that, we were, I went on Wikipedia and I'm like, here's a list of forum software. So then I went through every single one. And then I found one called Zenforo, which was new and it was still growing. I was like, okay. So then I checked it out and I loved it. And I got a preview of it from the developers and I was like, holy cow, that was amazing. <laughs> and then like, it was so simple. Everything you want just to put in a way, and like, um, you can even migrate easily if you don't like it and stuff like that. And the pricing was really good too. And they had a media gallery, and they had all the stuff, and they had chats and everything. And the community, and like, they came up with so many good add-ons, and it was really intense. And then I was like, hey, you know what? Let's use this. And then from then, the last two months of the summer, um, uh, Santa's daughter uh, Clara. She drew all the textures and the backgrounds and stuff. And then Tyler did the logo and he took um, Clara's textures and organized it. And then I pretty much, I did the coding and I, re like, I structured it all. I set up the hosting and all that jazz and I like, placed everything to where it was. And then I included in mobile support, which is right now it's kind of a bit difficult to use, but it still works. Like it's doable to use, which I'm thank God. Mobile support was a nightmare in my life. The media oh, careers yeah. will get you, yeah. <laughs> But I learned a lot though. Like I did, a, it was like mostly a lot of CSS, HTML, and JavaScript, and stuff. But like the floating bubbles were a pain in the butt. So like when you're <laughs> on the phone, like, you can't see all of them. I have to like carefully place each one, and they have to flow at this time. And on this screen, it has to be done differently. And it's like it was awful. But yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, it looks pretty good on my phone. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tablet's so good too, yeah. Thank God for our media queries. Um, but that, yeah, and ever since then, we were like, all right, let's establish a community. We came up with a first side challenge. We tweeted it out. Um, well, actually, we had a Twitter before that. Um, but we were going to save our Twitter until the day our site launched. But then um, one of our members, they were like, hey, why don't we just announce a Twitter so we can get a fan base and then announce a fan site. And that's what we did. So when we announced the Twitter, we didn't we kept the fan site a secret for two months, and we worked on that. And now, ever since then, and the awesomeness of Jenny for helping spread the word. God bless that woman. She did a lot for us. Um, like she like she was really excited and everything. And like like she's amazing. Um, yeah, you know she saw it and she was like, oh, this is amazing. I'm gonna show it to every molecule and everything. I still remember. And then she um. Yeah, and then ever since then, everything went to a whirlwind, and nice. here we are today. Only three episodes after four <laughs> months. We're really going to get on this podcast, I think. It was really well, nice. I've been kind of surprised at how many, how much activity there is on that site already, even though the game isn't even in beta yet. <laughs> I know. You know. I mean, people are on there talking about the game, like, every single day. There's a lot of members already. and I I'm mean, really I grateful you... for it, too. I didn't expect yeah. it at all, because the game wasn't even, like... We didn't even know anything about it before PGW. It's like, I know, like, the first day, I think we had over 30 people, second day, over 50. And, like, they're, like most of them were from Lubbock Planet. Like, you know, that's, like, the community went over. Like, I knew everyone there. They're like, oh, hey, happy to meet a fan site. Let's join that. That's kind of, like, how it happened. And then yeah, from when there, I joined. we got so many new people that I didn't even know about. Like, uh, Blue uh, the guy who makes mm -hmm. that fantastic fan art that's pretty yeah. much the same as the actual, yeah. Like, he was, like, he was from Movie Planet, but he didn't play it, like, recently. He just came on Dreams and he loves Dreams. This guy I never met him before in my life. Like, and Stampy, like, he played LBP, but I didn't know him at all. Like, I met so many new people, and people who didn't even play Movie Planet at all, and, like, they want to play Dreams. And I'm like, holy cow, it's not just old familiar faces, new ones too. And now we're approaching 250 members in like four months time. And it's like, <laughs> holy cow, like what, like this is amazing. 
and you yeah. know so much happened and it's like I know this topic wasn't even a part of the podcast episode. I'm just ranting about it. <laughs> I made like a, like I was working on a presentation to, to like show everybody um the development of it. I'm still working on it, but you know I want like I still have it like in my mind. I wanted to tell somebody, so here I am. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah. Well, it's good for people to know how these things come together, you know, because I, I think a lot of people think, oh, you just start a fan site. It's like one person just goes and starts a fan site. And it doesn't really work that way because like you just that way explained, you, you know, you, you got a team and you got a good team of people to work on it. And I think that's why it's been so successful, you know, because you got the right people working on it and everyone worked together and did a good job. It's yeah. I mean, everyone did their part and it was really cool. I did the hosting, all the admin, porn stuff, setting it up and stuff like that and the coding and the uh, twitter and stuff like that and that was my part in it and it's been really crazy like like you said pikachu like if i was doing it by myself i would have never made a fan site because it would be too much for me to handle yeah yeah, yeah it, definitely um but i'm really glad i do have these people with me um hopefully we're gonna be more active when the beta comes out we'll see what happens we may or may not have some really cool ideas for it we're still talking about it it's gonna be a lot of fun yeah. Uh, and hopefully other fan sites will join us too, like Dreams, DE, and um, PlayStation 4 Dreams. And hopefully some new ones in the future. Who knows? And that'll be kind of fun. Uh, yeah, well, I, I probably shouldn't say too much about it right now because it's kind of still in the working stages, but Little Big Network is going to have a Dreams, uh, he'll dedicate Dreams section uh, very soon also. <laughs> very soon? Yes. All right, so... Yeah, it's in the works. There's going to be some changes happening. Ooh, fancy. Mm -hmm. A lot of when that happens, so that's going to be really fun. Uh, quiet teaser right there. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to be having another fan side to join the family, hopefully during the beta. Uh, do you know if it's going to be during the beta or after? Or. Um, yeah, we're, we're hoping to have a Dreams area fully functioning for the beta. Oh, well, I can't wait for that. Wow, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's uh, a very exciting. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to see what software you guys use and stuff and see how you do it compared to us. That'll be kind of fun to see like, how everything works. Because I know you guys made a fan site before, so you know the experience. Yeah, although I, I can't really comment on that because I, I don't do any of the actual website building. I mean, my, my involvement on this is just sort of saying, like, hey, this is how I think it should be organized. This is the kind of content we should have. This is what we should offer for the members. Um, we've, got, we've got other people who are the logic experts because that's not me. Uh -huh. I'm sure your coders, I don't know who they are, but they're probably really talented. I know Back High Inc. was a pretty good coder. He did Planetarium and other yes. stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, that's kind of what he does like professionally in real life. Yeah, yeah he's that so, website. He helped me yeah. a lot, like setting up a server and stuff. Like, I had no clue how to do it. He told me how to do it, and then I learned from there. He yeah, was like I... my Jedi master for a moment, <laughs> <laughs> for like a week. And then I cut the grasp of it, and I learned. It was really uh, fun. I think Baghead may actually be a Jedi. He just doesn't let people know about it. He has a bag <laughs> on his head. We need to see. Is he Dark Vader? <laughs> Luke he takes off his bag. I am your father. Bag Vader, yeah. <laughs> bag Vader. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, uh, Pukuchu and Ben, thank you so much for joining us. Hope you guys enjoyed being on air. Oh, thank flies. you for having us. It's thank been awesome. So much for having yeah, us, it's, it's been, been almost awesome. two hours. Wow. And congrats to you for everything that you've done, man. That's really, really cool. You're doing oh. that. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah. You no, know, but like, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm just a community member who's really hyper. Just like everybody else. <laughs> That's all I am. I mean, keep doing what you do. Um, Pukuchu and Ben, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Danny. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and happy birthday. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm still saving that first drink with the molecules. I'm going to see them again one day. I'm going to see if you're reading that. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so thank you so much for everything you guys do and all the other stuff. Is there any last words, any last comments, remarks, regrets? Want to say how much I love Media Molecule? <laughs> I know, right? MM for life. Hashtag MM for yeah. life. <laughs> 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 all right well it's been a pleasure guys thank you so much uh, Thanks, Danny. Thanks, thank you everyone for joining our third podcast it will be out follow us in bubble dreaming on twitter follow me and molecule at me and molecule follow uh pukuchu at lbb pukuchu or lb pukuchu and follow ben at uh ben he does production <laughs> stuff you follow me in the credits follow me, some movie or somewhere around the street yeah. yeah he'll be right down the street um <laughs> And thank you, everyone. We are out and have a nice night or day, whatever time zone you are in. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.